Midnight Sacrifice, Disaster Strikes Chenemo unexpectedly travels to a disaster world without sun, moon, and stars, and opens a new life in the mysterious advertisement of Data Creates Value, Tianhua Quantum Technology. From the painful self-immolation of the bio-modified humans in the evil beehive laboratory, to the mournful howl of the battle of the misty insect sea castle, from the despair sealed by the ancient cultivator returning to the ruins, to the glimpse of a demon that has reincarnated for thousands of years day and night when the terrifying demon god invading through the cracks of time and space is torn apart by antimaterial weapons, and when the civilization born from the fine dust initiates the ecological extinction, it is only then that the so dot called magnificent war in that corner is just a tombstone on the path of self-destruction for the rising insects. Keywords of the novel No pop-ups when disaster strikes, download the complete set of disaster strikes txt, and read the latest chapter of disaster strikes. Chapter 1 Disappearing Chen Mo You are listening at novelfull.audio Chapter 1 Disappearing Chen Mo Six Years After Graduating From University As a member of the working class in this city, Wang Tsong is immersed in busy work all day long, and even occasional leisure time is wasted in games. That day, a strange call came from his phone. Hello. Wang Kong. You knew that Chen Mo really existed, but he just disappeared suddenly. I'm not crazy, why didn't you tell them about Chen Mo? Why? Upon hearing the angry voice on the other end of the phone, Wang Tsong's face turned very ugly. I. A hint of guilt and apology appeared in his eyes, and Wang Tsong hesitated and didn't know what to do. Chen Mo is real. I'm not crazy. You bastard. Before Wang Tsong could respond, he hung up the phone for convenience. Due to this phone call, Wang Tsong's mental state remained in a daze for the next day. At night, Wang Tsong returned to the apartment alone, and his room was particularly quiet. He took off his coat, turned on the desk lamp, and sat quietly in front of the desk, propping his chin with both hands. With increasingly guilty eyes, his expression gradually became painful. It's been ten years now, because I don't want to be like you, a madman in everyone's eyes. I've been talking to others about Chen Mo, who doesn't exist in their eyes, and I just want to live a normal life. The incident began in a full-dot-time art vocational school located in the provincial capital city around the capital. The time is March 12, 2011, with 56 days left until the college entrance examination. That day is Chen Mo's birthday. The reason why Wang Tsong remembers so clearly is that on March 11th of that year, a magnitude 9 earthquake occurred in the surrounding waters of a certain island country, triggering a tsunami. The classmates in the class celebrated warmly with patriotism. Due to the full dot time closed management of the school, the college entrance examination is about to take place, and everyone is under a lot of pressure. I remember Chen Mo once said on that day that tomorrow is his birthday and he should also celebrate it well. Afterwards, there were nuclear radiation leaks and salt-grabbing incidents. As he recalled, Wang Tsong's thoughts became increasingly distant, as if he had returned to the day when Chen Mo disappeared in the winter of that year. At that time, my personality was very introverted, and I didn't have many friends at school. I only interacted frequently with two classmates. One is his desk mate Wu Huaiden, and the other is Chen Mo, who has been living with his grandmother in the neighbor's house. Chen Mo lived with his grandmother and became neighbors with me because both of his parents divorced and remarried separately. We started in the same class in junior high school and later went on to high school together, but were still assigned to the same class. Our relationship goes without saying. To celebrate Chen Mo's birthday, I made a special phone call and asked my cousin to order a cake from outside to deliver. There is a low wall in the backyard of the school, outside is a dirt road under the railway, and there is also a breeding farm behind it, which is relatively remote. Therefore, people often climb over the wall here, and the teacher often comes here for duty inspections, which makes me tremble with fear for a long time when I pick up the cake. Chen Mo doesn't have many friends either, but he's not isolated. 
he's just unwilling to take the initiative to communicate due to family reasons. However, because he's very handsome, has fair skin, and studies very well. He scored 148 in math in his sophomore year, ranked first in all subjects, and eighth in total in the school. Therefore, I know many female classmates like him. At noon that day, the three of us made an appointment to go to the abandoned dormitory building behind the school to privately celebrate Chen Maqing's birthday. This dormitory building was not abandoned before, but was rented to another railway vocational school. However, due to poor school discipline, it was no longer renewed and became vacant. The brick building looks very dilapidated, and the red bricks start to darken, emitting a musty smell, but it has become the favorite place for some couples in the school. In the evening, someone will play play badminton here, usually the students in senior one. Both Wu Huideng and I took gifts. My cake goes without saying, Wu Huideng gave us a pair of Unix badminton rackets, which cost about a few hundred yuan, which was a huge sum of money for us at that time. Chen Imo also gave us a gift in return. What I gave Wu Huaden was a complete comic book titled Slam Dunk Master, and what I gave me was a Winnie Bear keychain that his parents bought from abroad before they divorced. After eating the cake, there was still some time before class. Wu Huaden proposed to play play badminton, saying that he wanted to feel his Eunice racket again. Six goals per person would result in a loss. Although the weather in March in the north is very cold, the sun is a bit harsh, and the wind is not suitable for play badminton. So when we played, we unconsciously began to approach the abandoned dormitory building to take shelter from the wind until Wu Huaden hit the badminton into the second floor window of the abandoned dormitory building with too much force. All the windows of this building have been closed with broken wooden boards, and many of the glass behind the boards have been broken. The badminton ball fell into the gap between the broken boards. Because there was only one ball, Wu Huaiding suggested going in to pick it up. Someone said that before the school was established, this was a cemetery where some strange things happened. I was a bit scared, but Chen Imo said it was his gift, so he climbed in with Wu Huaiding through the window. I am responsible for keeping the breeze outside to prevent any on duty teachers from coming over. I remember very clearly that at least 20 minutes had passed and there was no movement between the two inside. I couldn't help but look around and crawl in. The corridor was very dark, with only a little light shining through the window sealed by broken wooden boards. There was dust everywhere, and there was a slight smell of decay and mold. I bravely lowered my voice and shouted a few times, Wu Huaiden and Chen Imo, because I was afraid of being heard by passers-by outside but I didn't receive any response. As the badminton ball fell to the second floor, I tried to walk up the stairs to see. The sound of the wind blowing in through the window gap was like the cries of many people, with a distance of less than a hundred meters. I walked for about two to three minutes, but there was no response from both of them several times during this time. Ah! Suddenly, screams came from within the gloomy corridor. I got goosebumps and almost didn't even think about it before turning around and running towards the window where I came from. I crawled out of the window and then gasped for breath to see Wu Huaiding also climb out of the window. Where's Chen Imo? I asked Wu Huaiding. At that time, I thought it was two people working together to scare me. I don't know. Wu Huaiding gasped and said, he said he gave you the keychain. His key seems to have fallen to the spot where he just picked up the ball, so he went back to look for it. I was waiting for him, but the ghostly cry scared me. When I heard someone running, I followed along and thought it was Chen Imo. I just realized that he mistook me for Chen Imo. How did you go in for so long? Aren't we just going in for less than a minute? Wu Huading's words made me a bit confused. I have been waiting here for at least twenty minutes. Next, the two of us gasped and waited outside for a long time, but we didn't see Chen Imo come out. We reached into the hallway several times and called out Chen Mo's name, but we didn't receive any response. It wasn't until the class bell rang that Wu Huaiting noticed that the comic book Slam Dunk Master that Chen Imo had given it was gone, 
which had been clearly placed on that concrete floor before. Without much consideration, we hurried towards the classroom. After we ran to the classroom, the math teacher had already arrived for a while and was lecturing on the topic. Seeing us panting, we didn't say much before letting in. We were sitting at the same table, opposite the back row, and naturally passed by Chin Mo's seat, only to find that his seat was actually occupied by the math class representative Rong Yi Yi. After we sat down and searched for a while in the class, we didn't see Chin Mo. Have you seen Chin Mo? I quietly patted Zhu Yidan's shoulder on the front table and asked softly. Who is Chin Mo? Zhu Yidan's rhetorical question stunned me for a moment. She has been secretly in love with Chen Mo since her freshman year. Wu Huiding seemed a bit impatient and repeated, Chen Mo. The math teacher lost a chalk head and asked Wu Huiding to stand up and listen to the class. We had to suppress our doubts until the end of class. As soon as class was over, Wu Huiding began to inquire about Chen Mo's news one after another in the class, but everyone without exception showed confusion. Who is Chen Mo? Even Chen Mo's former desk mate looked puzzled, as if everyone didn't remember Chen Mo, or perhaps this person had never appeared. Wu Huiden once believed that the whole class had united to deceive him. Then he began to ask other classmates and even the teacher, but they all got the same result. Chen Mo seemed to disappear out of thin air, and everyone forgot about his existence, including the transcript on the wall and Chen Mo's name. This feeling is like there is some kind of power that has taken Chen Mo to a different dimension. There is a mysterious force in this universe that is repairing the minimal impact brought by Chen Mo's disappearance. Later on, Wu Huiding became a bit bewildered and said that Chen Mo had disappeared when he saw someone. The homeroom teacher noticed Wu Huiding's abnormality and called his parents, saying that it was because the pressure of the college entrance examination was too high, and they were constantly searching for non-existent classmates. They suggested seeking psychological counseling and treatment. At first, Wu Huiding repeatedly told everyone about Chin Mo's past in the QQ class group, including his previous grades, who had a good relationship with him in the class, and so on. Later, he was kicked out of the class group by the class leader who couldn't bear the disturbance. During the college entrance examination, Wu Huiding came to school once and publicly questioned me why he didn't tell others about Chen Mo. At that time, I was very scared because I didn't want to be seen as crazy by others, so I never spoke. Chen Mo misread you. I'm not crazy. I've mixed up friends like you. I still remember Wu Huiding, who was surrounded by strange gazes from everyone. He repeatedly defended himself in pain and tried to pull me out as a witness but my silence ultimately turned his gaze at me into anger. He hates me for not defending Chen Mo's mysterious disappearance, he is not a madman. End of this chapter Chapter 2 Disaster Academy You are listening at NovelFull.audio Chapter 2 Disaster Academy, Where is this? Turning around, Chen Mo felt like he was asleep and had a long dream. As he gradually woke up, he instinctively thought it was time for morning self.study, but when he opened his eyes, he was shocked to find that this was not the school dormitory. The room is very dim, with two skylights, and the sky outside is gray. After struggling to get up from the stone bed covered in animal skin, Chenemo came to the room in confusion and stood there in disbelief, stunned for a long time. The sky was gray and hazy, with no sun, moon, or stars. On the desolate land, as if covered in volcanic ash, black rocks are occasionally exposed. Not far away, a large black river rolls through, with countless forest white bones scattered on both sides of the riverbank. As far as the eye can see, it is barren and lifeless. Behind him, the Sodot called house was actually an incredibly huge skull, and the two skylights were the two eye sockets of the skull. Chen Mo's legs softened and he sat on the ground in a daze. Accompanied by hunger in his stomach, a memory that did not belong to him emerged in his mind and he immediately passed out. I don't know how long it took before Chen Mo woke up again. Although the sky is still gray, it has become much brighter than before. According to Stone's memory, 
it should be time for his morning exercise now. Surprisingly, it's time traveling. Chen Imo stared blankly at everything in front of him, finally accepting the fact that he had already traveled through. This is a world without sun, moon, stars, and vitality, called the disaster world. Due to the lack of vegetation and vitality, humans in a disaster world are unable to cultivate and raise crops. If people want to survive, they can only become so dot called natural disaster victims and maintain their survival by plundering resources from other worlds. This also shapes the cruel competition law of survival of the fittest in a disaster world. This is a cruel world that worships the strong. The owner of the body that Chen Imo is crossing at this moment is called Stone. According to Stone's memory, the area he is currently in is located in the Magic Eye area of the disaster world, a nearby wilderness called the Sorrow River Gathering Area. The reason why Chen Imo traveled here is that Stone's mother was completely disappointed with him and chose to abandon him. Stone doesn't know who his father is. Not just stones, many people in this world don't know who their father is. In a disaster world, mothers generally raise their children to adulthood and then send them to a disaster academy to cultivate them as natural disaster victims. As for the abandoned, it is equivalent to having the family as the unit and the caregivers declare to the world that they are an inherently inferior warrior. In this world that values the strong, no one sympathizes with a waste. This is similar to the rules for selecting Spartan warriors, where parents will gradually eliminate those inferior warriors from infancy. As for the fate of the abandoned, 90% of them were unable to go to the Gathering Place Disaster Academy and have the opportunity to become natural disaster victims. Another 9% of lucky abandoned individuals will die during the Hungry Ghost Trial at the Disaster Academy. Then the remaining 1% of abandoned individuals, 0.9%, will become the bottom warriors of this world, also known as natural predators. Less than 0.1% of abandoned individuals will live a normal life. According to Stone's vague memory, the reason why his mother abandoned him was because teaching him basic skills was always difficult to improve. Since a few years ago, his mother has been scolding him for being a fool, and from Stone's memory, his mind is indeed not very bright. The happiest thing every day is to play with monkeys and nectar. No matter how they play with him, he is not angry. Until a week ago, when I checked the progress of learning basic stone skills again, my mother was completely hopeless. Although he has a natural talent for stone skin, he is ultimately a fool who can't get rid of it. My mother eventually abandoned him, and no matter how much the stone cried and prayed, she remained indifferent and left the skeleton house that had raised him. Honey and monkeys no longer play with him. The simple stone was desperate. He wanted to go to the gathering place of the distressed river, but due to his timidity, he dared not go out until two days ago when he ate the last bit of food in his family. At the end of hunger, the stone made a wish on the bed. I pray to the great demon I God to make me smarter and bring my mother back. At this moment, the stone is just a child yearning for maternal love. However, the stone did not become smarter, and his mother did not come back. Chen Emo unexpectedly crossed over. Chen Emo sat in front of the door of the skull room, digesting the memories of the stone. At this moment, Chen Emo had no panic from the traveler, but instead found an inexplicable sense of belonging on the stone. We are all the same, children abandoned by their parents. Chen Emo lowered his head and looked at the skin on his arm. Touching this layer of skin is like covering it with a layer of keratin, very hard, which is the natural talent of stone skin and the origin of his name. You're not completely useless either. With your body and my mind, we can definitely live a good life in this world. Gollum. Chenemo cried out from hunger. The last bit of food here was also eaten by stone two days ago. He felt dizzy and dizzy from hunger. If he wanted to avoid starving to death, the only way was to immediately go to the gathering place of the distressed river, find the disaster academy that Stone had feared in his memory, and find a way to pass the academy's assessment and become a true disaster victim. According to memory, the gathering place is quite far away from here, 
and it would take at least three days to walk. Chen Mo estimated it to be around a hundred kilometers long. Live on, there is nothing valuable in the room, and Chen Mo has no attachment to it. Because he knew it was best to walk to the Disaster Academy while he still had some physical strength, and he could never sit idly by. Fortunately, because there is no sun, the weather is not considered hot. But Stone's memory told Chen Mo that the nights here would be very cold, so he took a fur blanket and a water bag, which would be all his wealth. He came to the riverbank and filled his water bag, seeing the reflection in the river. His image seemed to have changed slightly, as if it overlapped with the stone. His skin became whiter and more tender than the stone, and his face became more mature than his impression of himself. No more hesitation. After taking a final glance at the huge skeletal house standing in the desolate land, Chen Mo strode away in the direction he remembered. The ground is not so much land as sand and gray, with black and gray gravel everywhere, making a creaking and creaking sound when stepped on. Stone brother. Huh, stinky stone. Not far away, two voices of a man and a woman came from nearby. Chen Mo turned his head and saw that it was Stone's best playmate, Nectar, and Monkey. The two are also the only two neighbors within a few kilometers nearby. Honey is still as beautiful and lovely as Stone remembers, with snow.white skin and single eyelids. She used to like to call herself Stone Brother, but now she hesitates and lowers her head, afraid to look at herself. The monkey, on the other hand, had an undisguised look of disdain, making mocking faces and falling into the well to mock. He knew that from then on, the stone would no longer be on the same level as him. Feeling the indifference of the disaster world, Chen Mo didn't say much. He continued to bury his head and walk forward, feeling a bit strange. They didn't seem to notice the change in their appearance. Is it that this world or the universe is healing the influence of their time travel? Gradually, the river water receded. On the desolate land, apart from sandstone and limestone, only bones remain. These skeletons vary in size, some as large as small mountains, making it difficult to imagine what kind of giant creatures they were during their lifetime. As the sky gradually darkened, Chen Mo unknowingly completed the day's journey. The night of the disaster world is indeed as cold as the memory of a stone. Chen Mo stopped and curled himself up in the animal skin blanket, trying to bury himself in the sand and dust, but still couldn't help but tremble. He imagined the old man's bun in the school cafeteria, drooling and enduring the night. The next day, Chen Mo drank some water, relieved a little hunger, and continued moving forward. The sky gradually changed from gloomy to bright, and Chen Mo's footsteps became heavier and heavier. The sand and ash on the ground were constantly devouring Chen Mo's physical strength, and hunger tormented him. He knew that his time was running out, and perhaps it wouldn't be long before he became one of the countless bones on this desolate land. But before he died, he had to continue moving forward, which was his only chance. Just as Chen Mo was about to lose his grip and fall. Rumble, rumble. At the far end of the horizon, suddenly came a roar. Is it a wild beast? Unfortunately, I don't have the energy to escape anymore. Chen Mo, who was weak and fainting, woke up and joked to himself, what kind of beasts are there in this environment? As Chen Mo focused his attention and watched, accompanied by a slight confusion in Stone's memory, Chen Mo's despair was replaced by shock and surprise. Because the thing that made a rumbling sound turned out to be a four-dot will drive off. Road Vehicle in the memory of the stone, this is a rare item that only high.level natural disaster victims have. Just like discovering a life.saving straw, Chenimo vigorously waved his animal skin blanket, shouting for help, and the wheels rolled up with dust. After discovering Chenimo, the off.road vehicle actually turned around and drifted in front of him before coming to a graceful stop. The middle.aged man in the driver's seat is Kong Wuli but his expression is very calm. He looks at Chen Mo with his eyes, as if waiting for him to take the initiative to speak. Hello. Chen Mo leaned weakly against the car door and prayed, I really don't have the strength. 
can you take me to the Disaster Academy? Chen Emo has never sincerely prayed to anyone before, at least in his nearly 20 years of living on Earth. Although there is no mirror, Chen Emo knows that he must be very embarrassed at this moment. He is holding on to the car door tightly and dare not let go, because he knows that as long as the other person steps on the accelerator, he will definitely die. Come on up. Like the sound of heaven, the image of this middle-aged man instantly became incredibly tall in Chen Mo's eyes. Thank you. He used all his strength to open the car door and climbed up. Long long. The speed of the off-road vehicle was very fast, and the dust at the back of the car gradually fell down after a long time. The two of them quickly completed the journey that Chen Mo couldn't walk in a day. As the sand and ash on the ground gradually decreased and the rocks gradually increased, some building marks gradually appeared at the end of the horizon, and Chen Mo knew he had been saved. Quack quack. A giant bird flew over the sky, with its wings spread out for over 10 meters. It seemed that there was still a person sitting on top. Under the chilling shadow, Chen Mo couldn't help but watch for a while until the giant bird disappeared at the end of the sky, forming a sharp contrast with the slow and cumbersome balloon airship on the other side. The ground gradually flattened, and sand and ash were replaced by bluestone flooring. The bustling streets are bustling with people coming and going, and various giant skeletal decorations are dazzling. In the distance, there is even a towering light tower towering into the clouds. If it were in normal times, these strange and bizarre scenes of light would surely amaze Chinemo repeatedly. But at this moment, Chinemo, who was tormented by hunger, wanted to pray for food from this middle-aged man several times, but when it came to his mouth, he said, Thank you, may I ask your name? If I am still alive in the future, I will repay you. Apocalypse The off-road vehicle stopped in front of a gate. The man pointed to the huge building in the distance and said, that's the Disaster Academy. The apocalypse does not seem indifferent, but rather lacks eloquence. The overall attribute of a disaster world, although inclined towards evil and order, is due to the frequent need to cooperate and defeat certain enemies during the invasion of other worlds. In the process of life and death, some people still maintain a narrow sense of kindness towards their own people. The reason why it is called narrow-mindedness is because in their eyes, creatures from other worlds are all strategic targets, similar to the concept of NPC. Other natural disaster victims are their own people. However, even this narrow sense of kindness is not a universal value, but a partial value formed by the different growth experiences of different disaster victims. Thank you. Chen Mo nodded in gratitude upon hearing the words. He didn't want to trouble the man in front of him anymore. After deeply remembering his face, he got off the off. Road vehicle. Accompanied by a roaring sound, the off-road vehicle turned around and left. He looked up at this huge building, with several blood-colored characters engraved on its massive bones. Distressed River Disaster College. Although both belong to pictographic script, there is a significant difference between natural disaster script and Chinese characters. Fortunately, although Stone's mind is not very clever, he still knows the basic natural disaster script. In front of the college gate stood a cold and indifferent woman, with several half-aged children like herself looking at her. Another abandoned person. Just now he seemed to have been sent by a high-dot-level natural disaster victim. It should just be luck that I was rescued. Ignoring the comments of those children, Chenimo approached the woman and tentatively said, Hello, may I ask? Do you want to start implanting optical brain chips and starting the starvation ghost enlightenment training at the Disaster Academy? Before Chenimo could finish speaking, the woman asked lightly. Fortunately, Chenimo realized that he was not the only abandoned person here. Among the children behind the woman, there were also a few who were also dressed in tattered clothes and looked disheveled, all of whom seemed to be those who rushed to the academy alone, covered in dust and dust. Yes. With Chen Mo's response, the woman took him aside. This is a mysterious instrument that looks like an MRI machine, but its volume seems even larger, 
and its appearance is full of science fiction. It is out of place with the rough and crude bones scattered throughout the disaster world, which is somewhat abrupt. Under the woman's manipulation, Chunemo was locked inside the instrument. Data creates value, Tianhua Quantum Technology. After the instrument started up, an advertisement played unexpectedly, which made Chenimo feel a bit confused. He seemed to be in a modern hospital full of science fiction atmosphere, and then red light bars began to rotate around Chenimo, seemingly scanning his body condition. Creating a new file, may I ask your name? After hesitating for a moment, Chenimo realized that he was no longer just himself, but a combination of himself and the stone. He also thought of the previous apocalypse, which almost gave him a second life. He responded, Traveler. From now on, this will be our common name. Buzz. The blue and white aperture gradually enveloped Chen Emo. A robotic arm suddenly pressed against his neck, accompanied by a low dot frequency buzzing sound. Chen Emo, who was slightly nervous, noticed that the people outside seemed to have taken it for granted and finally relaxed a bit. A light curtain gradually floated onto the transparent glass of the instrument. Name Traveler Level Hungry Ghost Talent Stone Skin Chi and Blood 140, Defense 6, Speed 6, Strength 8, Physical Fitness 14, Spirit 23, Energy 10, Basic Fist Technique LV1 Basic Chopping LV1 Basic Block LV2 Equipment None Skill None The initialization of physical function data has been completed and the implantation of the optical brain chip has begun. With a slight pain in the back of the neck, the robotic arm retracted into the blue light of the instrument, and the instrument gradually stopped running. Chenemo instinctively stroked the back of his neck, as if there was something extra inside. From now on, I will write this new book quietly and steadily every afternoon at 6 o'clock p.m. End of this chapter Chapter 3 Different Origins You are listening at NovelFull.audio Chapter 3 Different Origins The woman looked at Chen Mo's gaze, seeming slightly surprised and puzzled. Signal Chen Mo to step out of the instrument and stand behind him. She was surprised because Chen Mo's natural disaster attribute was somewhat strange. Firstly, it is not difficult to see from his natural talent for stone skin. This little guy named Traveler is a natural disaster person who tends to evolve and develop in the direction of physical fitness. His 14 physical attributes also indirectly confirm this. But his basic attributes of speed and strength are really poor, especially his speed attribute, which is only a meager 6 points. His basic skills are even more mediocre, and can even be described as useless. Not only did he only master 3 basic skills, but his level was also pitifully low. If it weren't for never being taught before, there would only be one explanation. This is an inferior warrior, a waste that should have been eliminated long ago. I don't know why he has survived until now. However, strangely enough, this person's spiritual power reached an astonishing 23 points. Although there is no direct relationship between spiritual power and wisdom, a high level of spiritual power does not necessarily represent higher wisdom. However, a foolish person will definitely not have a high level of spiritual power, and having such a high value of spiritual power is absolutely impossible for a fool to achieve. Not only did the woman feel strange, but the starving ghosts waiting in front of the door also showed confusion. 23 Points of Mental Strength you should know the basic attributes of adult natural disasters. Without special talents and special training, the average is around 10 points, and above 15 points can be considered excellent. How could such people be abandoned? Moreover, he also possesses a natural talent for stone skin. Approximately one third of the adult natural disaster victims in the disaster world possess natural talent. 
Of course, this does not mean that every three babies born in a disaster world have a natural talent, but rather that only three out of a hundred babies may survive, and one of them has a natural talent. But fortunately, such female natural disaster victims, due to their reproductive benefits, rarely go out to carry out tasks and do not need to worry about injury, medical treatment, and reduced life expectancy. Therefore, they can continue to have children. In addition, with alternative population supplementation methods in the disaster world, the population will not continue to decline. Natural disaster victims evolve based on their own talents and are generally able to demonstrate increasingly strong abilities. Perhaps it's an orphan. Someone in the crowd guessed. Orphans and abandoned individuals are different. Although both have lost their family upbringing and had to enter a disaster academy before reaching full adulthood, the abandoned represent inferior warriors who have been abandoned by their relatives and deemed unworthy of cultivation. Orphans are those whose relatives died during the nurturing process, so it is inevitable that some highly qualified potential stocks will appear among them. Strange. After murmuring in her heart, the woman continued to stand in front of the crowd, gazing into the distance, waiting for the arrival of the next enlightenment-hungry ghost. Hello, may I ask? Could you give me some food to eat? The weak voice beside her made her unable to turn her head to look. It is precisely this little guy who has just established the hungry ghost file and implanted the optical brain data chip that is now staring at himself with weak eyes, as if he could collapse at any moment. If it were usual, she would naturally choose to ignore it. But just after completing the data-driven detection of him, the woman who was curious about his situation hesitated for a moment. Suddenly, a gray and empty area appeared in front of her. She raised her hand and grabbed the empty area forward, and surprisingly took out a bag of exquisite cookies and handed them to Chinimo. This is the high.n snack she had left over from her morning meal. She had planned to sneak a peek in the afternoon, but now she's offering this little one a discount. The storage space cannot store food for a long time, and even high.end food made from organic matter synthesizers in this disaster world can only be stored for a maximum of two days. Chen Emo is not surprised by this. The mother of the stone also possesses this ability, which is also one of the basic abilities of every natural disaster victim. The complete name is Natural Disaster Erosion Storage Space, which is commonly referred to as storage space by natural disaster victims. Thank you. Chen Mo's hand trembled as he opened the packaging bag, and he even saw the advertisement on it. Soak milk in a bubble, life is truly wonderful, happy home puffed cookies. As food entered his mouth, the sound of chewing between his lips and teeth transmitted to his brain, and he was immediately overwhelmed by this unprecedented sense of happiness. Feeling the sweet juice in the mouth, high-calorie nutrients gradually flow into the deep throat, and dopamine is like a flood of broken levees, continuously secreted in large quantities. At this moment, it seemed that every cell in his body had come to life, cheering and cheering. He never imagined that a small bag of cookies would have such magic, making him so happy and satisfied. He couldn't help but start eating the second, third, and fourth pieces, hello. A boy's voice came from Chen Mo's side. Chen Mo, who was enjoying the delicious food, turned his head and looked at a boy with dark skin. His clothes were also tattered and his hair was a bit curly, looking very disheveled. He looked at the biscuit in Chen Mo's hand and seemed very envious, but quickly concealed his emotions and grinned at Chen Mo harmless. My name is Charcoal. He took the initiative to introduce himself. My name is Traveler. Chen Mo's calm response made Charcoal look very happy. Chen Mo has to complain about the name of the disaster world from the bottom of his heart. It seems that it is because they do not have a profound cultural background and are exposed to a diverse and diverse world, resulting in a variety of names for the natural disaster victims. According to Stone's memory, some natural disaster victims have the same name as him, named after a certain object, while others have titles like Apocalypse or Traveler, with a tendency towards Japanese, Chinese, and European and American symbolic names. This mainly depends on the task world their mother experiences. 
Charcoal opened the door and said to the mountain, Are you an orphan? Hmm. I didn't guess wrong. After all, they are psychic experts with a spiritual power of up to 23 points. How could an excellent starving ghost like you be abandoned? Then he sighed and said, Just looking at you, you haven't really reached adulthood yet, have you fully developed your potential? Unfortunately, if you can grow up for a while more and challenge the hungry ghost trial after a hundred days, you should be more confident. But it's not related either. If we can unite, we can also make up for each other. Chenimo had a slight understanding of the hungry ghost trial mentioned by the other party from Stone's memory. This is the mission of the Disaster Academy that Stone's mother has been threatening him with, hoping to stimulate Stone's potential and strive for strength, but it turned out to be his nightmare. The two of them started to communicate with each other word by word. With the reminder of charcoal, Chenimo was surprised to find that after being implanted with a light brain chip in his neck, the physical function data that appeared on the light screen could be displayed in his eyes at any time with just a thought. Compared to speed and strength, Chen Mo's 23-point mental strength data is so eye-dot catching that he can be certain that the mental strength attribute value is definitely not the physical function data of a stone. This is likely the sole data brought by oneself as a traveler. This, thanks to the party's 9.year compulsory training, thanks to the National College Entrance Examination System, thanks to the school's exam-oriented education, and thanks to myself for studying hard and working tirelessly for over a decade. After being stunned for a long time, Chenimo held back this sentence in his heart. He recalled his diligent study and hard work in primary, middle, and high school, fighting fiercely in the sea of test papers every day, especially in the past two years of full-dot-time closed high school, where he went to bed at 11.30 p.m. and woke up at 5.30 a.m. every night. Now it seems that everything you put in will always be rewarded. On the other side, Charcoal began to introduce the people present. If nothing unexpected happens, this should be our hungry ghost enlightenment mentor for the next 100 days. There will always be only 100 classes in the Disaster Academy, corresponding to 100 mentors. Each mentor is responsible for one class, and the students will start the Hungry Ghost Trial after 100 days. The mentor will also start building new Hungry Ghost classes week by week. There were 10 people in the crowd behind the female mentor, except for Chenimo and Charcoal. These 10 people were further divided into three small groups. Charcoal first pointed to five of them. Compared to the embarrassment of the others, these five people dressed appropriately, socialized calmly with each other, and looked like they were talking big without any regard for the others. These five people are all adult starving ghosts. They not only have high basic attributes and skills, but also have mastered combat skills. They are the strongest among us and the most likely to pass the starving ghost trial. Don't provoke them. The so dot called adult starving ghost is not difficult to understand, referring to those whose bodies have fully developed, their basic potential has been fully developed, and it is difficult for them to improve naturally. As for the so dot called starving ghost, it is a hierarchical term in the disaster world, which can be seen as an enlightened natural disaster person, or a level zero natural disaster person. Then, Charcoal pointed towards three other people, two men and one woman. Before he could speak, the three of them glared at each other. One of them said coldly, what are you looking at? Uh, ha, uh, I'm sorry. After apologizing, Charcoal whispered, these three people are the abyss hungry death ghosts. It is said that there are countless worms under the abyss that devour each other and grow into human forms. Abyss hungry death ghosts often have a very fierce temperament, and their basic attributes and skills are also close to those of adult hungry death ghosts. The difference is that there are very few talented individuals, and they generally do not master combat skills. Chen Mo's introduction to charcoal is quite speechless. Regarding the abyss, he knows some from Stone's memory, because Stone's mother came from a certain abyss, which can only be said to be a world polluted by a disaster world. What worms devour each other is pure discrimination against the ignorance of local natural disaster victims. Finally, there were two people left, dressed in rags like Chenimo, 
and Charcoal gave a resentful smile. Du Fang Yen, Du Qingqing, and the siblings are all abandoned individuals. Being so familiar with the two, it is evident that Charcoal has already had a conversation in contact with the siblings. After noticing what Chen Emo and Mu Tan looked at, the two siblings reluctantly looked up and smiled, walking slowly towards them, their movements seeming a bit awkward and shy. I am Du Fang Yen. I, I'm Du Qingqing. The girl lowered her head and spoke softly. After Chen Emo examined her up close, she felt a bit speechless. Perhaps at her age, she was still in junior high school before crossing over. Hello, I am a traveler. After introducing themselves, the three of them finally got to know each other. It can be seen that the older brothers of these siblings are a bit timid and want to try their best to cover it up. Although the younger sister looks very well behaved, she is very shy and looks very similar to the original stone. This kind of personality is definitely the bottom of the food chain in the disaster world of the jungle, and the Sodot called inferior warriors are the first to be eliminated. Another student has arrived. After being reminded by Charcoal, Chen Emo, Du Fang Yen, and Du Qingqing turned their heads and saw a weak girl walking unsteadily. Her white clothes were already tattered and covered in sand and ash, and her body looked very weak, except for her face which remained clean. Her skin under the clothes was as white as snow. She gritted her teeth tightly and persevered step by step to reach the female supervisor. Then, with the guidance of the female supervisor, she entered the body function data instrument. Buzz. A light curtain appeared, and everyone outside the instrument could clearly see it. Name. Cold snow. Level. Hungry ghost. Talent. None. Chi and blood. 80. Defense. 1. Speed. 15. Strength. 10. Physical fitness. 8. Spirit. 11. Energy. 13. Basic footwork. LV4. Basic jump. LV2. Basic body method. LV3. Basic assassination. LV4. Basic chopping. LV3. Basic block. LV1. Equipment. None. Skill. None. Wow. After seeing the light curtain attribute, Charcoal not only exclaimed in surprise, but also exclaimed with joy, another orphan has arrived. The basic attributes and skills are both good, I will contact you. The reason for judging her as an orphan is simple. Firstly, her basic attributes and skills are still good, and this level of starving ghost is generally not abandoned. Secondly, she was not sent by a high-dot-level natural disaster victim. She has been in such a miserable state all the way, and her loved ones are obviously no longer here, so she can only come here on her own. When the girl named Han Shui walked out of the instrument and limped slowly towards this side, Charcoal took the initiative to greet her, and the two began to chat. He obviously repeated what Chen Magong had just heard. Chen Emo compared his attributes slightly with this girl. In terms of basic attributes, Chen Emo is undoubtedly quite outstanding. As a time traveler, his spiritual attributes can be said to be quite outstanding, but his basic skills are terrible. I have only mastered three basic skills, and their levels are all pitifully low. It was precisely because of his poor basic skills that Stone's mother abandoned him cruelly, making him an abandoned person. After a moment, Charcoal brought the girl to the three of them. Hello, I'm Han Shue. She took the initiative to introduce herself, her voice was high and cold, just like her name was cold. Although she was so weak that she was almost on the verge of collapse, she still persisted in her arrogance. Chen Emo could see the stubbornness and indomitability in her personality. Next, Chen Emo, Du Fang Yen, and Du Qingqing all introduced themselves, and the five of them got to know each other for the first time. Time passed and soon it was evening. Although there is no sun, moon, or stars in a disaster world, and there is no strict definition of day and night, 
the dim sky also has changes in brightness and temperature, as well as differences between day and night. Just as everyone thought that in the next hundred days, the class would be composed of thirteen people in front of them, a colorful giant bird descended from the sky. The strong wind made the waiting students hold on to the wall one after another. After the giant bird folded its wings, a masked high dot level disaster victim led a gorgeous dressed boy and jumped off its back. The boy was spotless and surrounded everyone, feeling a sense of oppression from the return of the king. The masked man led him to the female mentor, and after a brief touch, he followed her instructions and entered the body function data instrument. Buzz. A light curtain appeared on the instrument. Name. Lei Wu. Level. Hungry Ghost. Talent. Thunder Paralysis. Qi and Blood. 120, Defense. 3, Speed. 14, Strength. 10, Physical Fitness. 12, Spirit. 18, Energy. 16, Basic Footwork. LV6. Basic Jump. LV4. Basic Body Method. LV3. Basic Block. LV2. Basic Perception. LV3. Basic Locking. LV5. Basic Shooting. LV2. Basic Element. LV11. Equipment. None. Skill 1. Thunderbolt. Skill 2. Thunderbolt Technique. Skill 3. Double Thunder Burst. Not only charcoal, but also the five adult starving ghosts who have been huddled together are shocked and speechless. This basic attribute and skill data is not something that ordinary people can achieve, and undoubtedly belongs to the elite of the starving ghost elite. Now that you have a natural disaster identity file, these contribution points will be used as daily expenses during your college years. Next, it's up to you. After explaining to Lei Wu, the masked man patted his shoulder and then rode away on a giant bird. It wasn't until the boy named Lei Wu stood in front of everyone for a while that Charcoal regained consciousness. However, this time, he tactfully did not approach the conversation, and Lei Wu did not seem to have any intention of talking to the crowd. He stood alone. Gudu. Charcoal swallowed the waterway and said, this must be a descendant of some natural disaster lord. According to Stone's memory, Chenemo knew that the Sodot called Disaster Lord was a fourth-level Disaster Lord, a true high-dot-level Disaster Lord in the Disaster World. These powerful Disaster Lords usually rarely appear in gathering places, and their established families are often the embryonic form of future Disaster Gathering Places. It only depends on whether they can further advance and become the legendary Disaster Lord. Natural disaster lords generally possess the power of their bloodline true body, so their descendants not only inherit high dot quality bloodlines and gain better basic attribute growth, but also receive careful cultivation from their families during the growth process. The basic skill level is not comparable to that of ordinary starving ghosts. As for combat skills, the prerequisite for learning is that the basic attributes and skill levels are sufficient. Only with the basic attributes and skill levels can one further learn. End of this chapter. Chapter 4 Violence Solves Everything You Are Listening at Novel Full. Audio. Chapter 4 Violence Solves Everything at Night. The Disaster Academy provides a free premium food for newly enrolled starving ghosts. The disaster world does not produce food, not because of laziness and ignorance, but because of the laws of the world. This is not only the land without the nutrients and vitality required for plant growth, but also the sky without the radiance of the sun, moon, and stars. Except for the limited land directly commanded by various evil gods, the entire world can be said to be a lifeless place, with almost no available resources except bones, stones, and water. It can be said that the only resource of a disaster world is the more active laws of time and space than other worlds, which can easily cross the terrible world barriers. 
Therefore, all materials in a disaster world need to be plundered from other worlds, including food. Food is the most basic commodity in a disaster world, and everyone is consuming it every day. It needs to be purchased with precious natural disaster contribution points. As for the contribution of natural disasters, it is a disaster world currency recorded through optical data chips. Exquisite grilled meat with a burnt exterior and tender interior, presenting a light golden color. Twelve plates dipped in sauce, each with a variety of flavors. Full-bodied caviar, matsutake on smoothie, sweet and soft cream bread, tempting red wine, and a few fresh and plump cherries the high.end food in front of us is too luxurious for these starving ghosts. The contribution of this meal alone is likely to reach triple digits, which is a cost they cannot afford at all. Even Lei Wu showed some excitement, let alone other starving ghosts. Dong. The wall clock rings on time. It's already 9 p.m. I am delighted to have you all come to the Distressed River Disaster College. Starting today, I will be your enlightenment mentor, and you can call me Ching Hong Mentor. She raised her tall glass to signal to the crowd. In the next hundred days, I will do my best to fully tap into your potential and cultivate you into a qualified natural disaster sufferer to pass the upcoming Hungry Ghost Trial. Adults who starve to death can still learn from others by holding up their wine glasses as a gift, while those who starve to death in the abyss and those who are abandoned appear slightly flustered. After completing the etiquette with some restraint, everyone began to enjoy the delicious food in front of them with different postures. Compared to the wolf swallowing of charcoal, Chinimo struggled to restrain his desire to wolf down due to hunger, striving to maintain the most basic etiquette and savoring the food in front of him with a relatively gentle taste. Until there was only a mess left on the dining table, the banquet came to an end. Immediately after, everyone was taken to a huge mixed-gender dormitory. In the world of disaster, under the cruel social rules of the jungle, there is only a strong and weak driving relationship, no gender protection distinction, and no so-called moral constraints. In Chen Mo's view, the absurd mixing of men and women in dormitories can be said to be quite natural for other starving ghosts, without causing any waves. In the vast dormitory, although the beds are arranged in pairs, there are dozens of them, enough for everyone to allocate. Chen Mo chose a bed near the window and laid out his only luggage, which was the animal skin blanket, on it. Get out of here, I'll take this position. The domineering voice behind him made Chen Mo look angrily. This person is one of the five adult starving ghosts. If I remember correctly, when he introduced himself at the banquet, his name should be Fei Xiaojiang, and he even took a liking to this window seat and came to compete with him. The two looked at each other for a moment, and although Chen Mo was angry, he didn't say much. In a world of disaster, violence can solve everything, and the opponent's strength is clearly above him. Chen Mo put away his blanket and silently changed beds. Fortunately, you didn't have any impulsiveness. That guy's basic palm technique level has reached LV5 and he has mastered E. Level combat skills. Don't provoke him. Chen Mo's new bed was next to charcoal, and he whispered a warning. The beds of Du Fang Yen, Du Qingqing, and Han Shui were all adjacent to charcoal. Chen Mo then realized that the reason why Fai Xiajiang seized his bed was not because it was adjacent to the window, but because it was close to several other adult starving ghosts. Thinking of this, his anger also subsided a bit, it was his carelessness. As for the so.called E.level combat skills, according to Stone's memory, they are the lowest rating among combat skills. The lower the skill rating, the lower the additional basic attribute damage growth, but this does not mean that low.level skills are useless. Firstly, learning combat skills with lower ratings requires lower basic attributes and skill levels, allowing for earlier learning. Secondly, activating low.level energy requires less cooling time and energy consumption, and can be used frequently to deal with various complex situations. Finally, there are lower level skills that often come with various negative attributes and control effects, which can pave the way for higher level skills, minimize the probability of higher level skills falling through, and achieve a one-hit kill effect. In short, 
the strength of a natural disaster victim is not directly related to how many combat skills they have mastered, but rather to the combination effect of their various skills. Get lost. A stern reprimand made the room quiet and everyone looked over. The scolder is none other than Lei Wu. But unlike Fike Jiang who was snatching a bed, Lei Wu actually let a seductive and charming girl who actively approached leave him. At this moment, the girl's face was quite awkward. This person is also one of the five adult starving ghosts, called Tian Tian. Brother Lei Wu, what are you afraid of? They just fear the cold at night and want to be next to you, but they won't eat you. After the awkwardness, Sweetheart continued to try acting coquettishly. But as Lei Wu slowly turned his head and faced his cold, majestic, and sharp gaze, Tian Tian finally left with wit, but still looked reluctant to part. He he. Upon seeing this, Charcoal looked envious and chuckled, she's a natural talent for enchantment, best at seduction, tsk tsk tsk. On the other side. You, you. What are you doing? On the other side, sweetness was eating on Lei Wu's body, but on this side, there came Du Qingqing's weak cry, looking very panicked and afraid. Let go of me, you let go of me. Although it was a scolding, the delicate voice made people feel animal blood boiling no matter how they listened, Charcoal and Chen Emo turned their heads to look at the adult starving ghost named Louis, who was holding on to Du Qingqing's tender little hand with an undisguised greed in their eyes. Their tongues licked the corners of their mouths and they chuckled strangely, completely ignoring Du Fanyan's glaring anger. What are you afraid of? I want you to be next to my bed, not to be my attendant, he he. Du Fang Yen, standing beside him, was obviously extremely angry at the moment, but he never dared to speak up and stop him. He just watched as his sister was being teased. Stop it. But Han Shui stepped forward and shouted loudly, stopping the reckless Louis. Louis slowly turned his head and looked at Han Shui, who was glaring at him. He grabbed Du Qingqing's wrist and looked up and down at Han Shui. What, you want to come over and accompany me? You're dreaming. Although Han Shui had not yet had the opportunity to learn combat skills and became an orphan, she did not have the confidence to defeat Louis. However, she knew that a person could lack strength, but they must not lose the courage to resist, otherwise they would be pushed forward and ravaged recklessly. Although the disaster world does not sympathize with the weak and advocates violence to solve everything, it is not entirely without social rules. For example, killing people at will in gathering places is a rule set by the gods of natural disasters and evil spirits, who are the strongest forms of violence in the disaster world. Then she looked at Du Fang Yen, Charcoal, and Chen Emo with a pleading gaze. Charcoal lowered his head, pretended not to see it, and warned Chen Emo with his eyes not to meddle. Seeing that neither Charcoal nor Chen Emo reacted, Han Shui looked at Du Fang Yen again. This is your sister. However, at this moment, Du Fang Yen, although clenching his fists tightly, his bloodshot eyes were about to burst into flames, and his heavy breathing was like that of a cow he still dared not speak up to stop him. Pop. Louis slapped Du Fang Yen with a backhand. After being beaten, this guy's anger also extinguished, completely wilting. He chose to lower his head like charcoal, afraid to look at Han Shui and Du Qingqing again. It seems that the reason why this guy was abandoned is not without reason, his cowardice is his biggest obstacle. At this moment, the eyes of everyone in the dormitory turned to this side, as if waiting for how Han Shui would handle it. Faced with Lu Yi's aggression, Han Shui looked grim and seemed to have prepared for the worst, but no one doubted her determination to resist to the end. Let go of him. A cold voice suddenly came. As everyone looked around, it turned out to be the man named Ko Wu from the group of three starving ghosts in the abyss, who spoke out in time to stop him. The other two abyss starving ghosts looked at him with a surprised expression on their faces, wondering why he was so meddling. Louis seemed to be angered and stared at Kowu intently. Want to be a leading bird? Kowu remained silent as he slowly stood up, appearing particularly tall. 
After glancing at Louis, he walked directly towards the open area of the dormitory. Louis certainly understands the meaning of suffering without. After giving a sneer, he shook off Du Qingqing's wrist and followed over. Immediately after, under the gaze of everyone, there was no nonsense at all. The two of them clashed on the spot, punching and kicking each other, constantly probing, and then starting to face each other head dot on. Undoubtedly, he is a starving ghost from the abyss. His strength value has reached at least 15 points or above, and his basic martial arts have also reached at least LV6 or above. Otherwise, it would be impossible to suppress Louis so much. The charcoal beside him exclaimed in a low voice, unaware that he had ignored Han Shui's request for help before. What was wrong with this? It can be seen that charcoal does not know the specific data of Kuwu, obviously it should have been the data-driven chip implantation completed before him. The battle between the two was accompanied by a wild beast-like roar, and it could be said that they were punched to the flesh, and soon saw blood. Overall, Kowu has the upper hand. As Charcoal said, the basic attributes and skills of Kowu should generally be above Louis. After a moment, Louis Jia was punched hard and hit the wall, causing blood from his forehead to drip down to the ground along his chin. This made Chin Mo, who was still at the level of the earth, widen his eyes and his breathing became rapid. No wonder the stones of the past were so afraid. There is no such thing as fighting here, only combat. This is a huge test of the psychological state of many people. If they had not fought like this in school before, let alone school discipline, it would have involved legal issues. However, here, everyone is already commonplace. You want to die. The deer with blood on its forehead is like a wild beast with crazy hair. I saw him lean forward with his right hand, following the black and grey ripples in front of him, and he actually reached into the storage space eroded by the natural disaster. Then, with a flash of green light, a metal paw appeared on his hand, like a wolverine waving its paw. With a pop sound, a bloody wound was cut open on his chest. Then, without waiting for any reaction, the energy on the surface of Louis's body flashed and he actually activated a skill. Hiss, he's still carrying a green quality weapon. This guy is in danger. The charcoal couldn't help but murmur when it saw this. The use of weapons and the absence of weapons are two completely different concepts. The green quality in the mouth of charcoal represents the rating of equipment in the disaster world, and just like the rating of skills, the data-driven classification of disaster world also divides equipment into different levels. On top of the lowest level white quality equipment is the green quality. The quality of equipment varies, and in addition to varying levels of basic attributes, the additional boost obtained for each level of enchantment also varies. The once innocent stone also asked his mother about the situation, but was later found out by her mother at the disaster academy, evading and perfunctory. Louis held sharp claws and the corners of his mouth showed a cruel curve. The skill he is using is exactly the E.level skill he has mastered, Ghost Claw Kill. Many people simply pursue skill damage bursts, but overlook the importance of details. Compared to other adult starving ghosts, Louis's overall strength is not outstanding. However, as a mother's pride, he also has his own outstanding feature, which is the handling of details. For example, at this moment, a point that many people will overlook. He seamlessly connects the skills he launches and completes after a regular attack. The advantage of doing so is that it can output damage with maximum efficiency per unit time, utilizing the energy-driven and instantaneous nature of combat skills to launch between two regular attacks, forming full power output. Although this is a basic skill commonly mastered by many advanced natural disaster victims, it is still quite advanced combat skills for low-dot-level natural disaster victims, let alone starving ghosts. Louis has honed it for an unknown amount of time. Because according to my mother, this is the correct way to use E.Level skills. Although E.Level skills are only the lowest level skills with extremely low damage coefficient, Sometimes the damage they cause is not as good as a regular attack, their characteristic is that the cooldown time is short, 
and they can frequently intersperse in regular attacks, causing additional damage and applying negative effects that come with the skills themselves. Ghost Claw Kill is an E.Level Assassination Skill. According to the calculation formula of combat skill data, the damage it causes is Basic skill damage, 10.20, plus speed coefficient asterisk 0.5 plus basic skill level plus weapon damage asterisk 0.2 plus skill proficiency level asterisk 1. Firstly, the basic damage of E.Level skills is between 10.20, while Louis' Ghost Claw Kill is a medium quality skill with a basic damage of 15. Secondly, the damage of Ghost Claw Kill is affected by the speed coefficient, and its speed attribute is 14. Multiplying it by the 0.5 bonus of the damage of the E. Level skill, the speed bonus damage is 7. The basic skill that affects the damage coefficient of Ghost Claw Kill is Basic Assassination which has a basic assassination level of LV5 and a damage bonus of 5. Afterwards, there is weapon damage. The basic damage attribute of green quality weapons is between 20 and 30, and his Dark Wolf Claw has a relatively high quality among green weapons, reaching 27 points. In addition, his mother has increased his enchantment by 1 level, and the enchantment damage of green weapons reaches a coefficient of 2, which is 27 plus 2 is equal to 29. But since Ghost Claw Kill is an E.Level skill, the weapon's damage coefficient is only 0.2, approximately 6 points. Finally, it must be said that the proficiency of the Ghost Claw Killing skill in Louis has reached LV4, with an E.Level skill proficiency coefficient of 1, which is 4 points. But skill proficiency and equipment enchantment upgrades will have additional attributes at levels 4, 7, and 10. The additional attribute after reaching level 4 proficiency in Ghost Claw Killing is that when using claw weapons to damage opponents, they will also have a bleeding effect, with a damage of 4 points per minute, which can be stacked. In this way, the damage that his Ghost Claw kill can cause is 15 plus 7 plus 5 plus 6 plus 4 is equal to 37 points, plus 4 bleeding points per minute. And Louis's normal strike damage with the Yulang Claw is Strength value plus basic skill level plus weapon damage. Its strength is 10, with a basic assassination level of LV5, which is 5. The weapon damage is 29, which is 10 plus 5 plus 29 is equal to 44. It is indeed more damaging than the E.Level skill Ghost Claw Kill. As for the defense value of Kowu, based on the recent battle situation, it only relies on increasing defense by 1 point for every 10 points of physical fitness and 1 point for each level of basic block, with a maximum of 5 points. As for shield skills, as well as defense, evasion, and interruption talents, if the opponent comes from an abyss, it is basically impossible to master them. I have been wrestling for a while now, and my 90 HP has decreased by about 40. Although the opponent is starting to take less damage, with a sneak attack from Yulang Claw and the previous damage, my HP has decreased by at least 60 points. If hit again by one's own E.Level skill, the opponent's HP will be reduced by more than 90 points, and there will also be a bleeding effect. The most important thing is that Ghost Claw Kill is launched by oneself using the gap between two ordinary attacks. After the skill hits, it can continue to connect with Claw Sting's ordinary attacks and do it again. Even if the other party doesn't die, they may still fall into a weak state, or even be on the brink of death. Louis grinned grimly, as if victory was within reach. His bloodthirsty wildness had made him forget that this was a disaster academy, and what the consequences would be if he really killed the opponent. This also allowed Chen Mo to truly witness the cruelty of a disaster world. If two people were to fight like this in a school before crossing over, holding weapons and directly greeting someone's chest, not to mention checking, the police would probably be on their way here, preparing to send metal bracelets. At a critical moment. But seeing that Kowu, who was originally in crisis in the eyes of everyone, suddenly dodged Louis's fatal blow with incredible speed and agility, making him pounce in the air. With a click, the wolf claw left five scratches on the nearby stone table. Impossible. 
Louis's shock was hard to conceal, and his brain was spinning rapidly. After excluding the judgment of the opponent's mastery of special talents and combat skills, there is only one conclusion, which is that if the opponent's basic body skills exceed their own by at least five levels, and their basic body skills are LV2, then the opponent has at least reached LV7. At this moment, Chenemo also noticed that there were scratches of all sizes on the tables, walls, and floors in the dormitory. These five scratches just now were not very noticeable. End of this chapter. Chapter 5 Data Panel You are listening at NovelFull.audio Chapter 5 Data Panel OK, OK After narrowly avoiding the fatal blow from Louis, just as they were about to counterattack, one of the adult natural disaster victims suddenly stood up. He seems to want to act as a mediator and reconcile the tense atmosphere. This person may seem fair, but in reality, he leans towards Louis. After all, Kowu was about to launch a counterattack after evading the attack from Louis. However, at this moment, this person stood up and stood in between the two, deftly resolving Kowu's attack. Today is just the first day, let's just get to know each other. There's no need to fight it out. This is a white-clad man who appears gentle and elegant, with an inexplicable affinity, appearing directly between the two. Faced with the watchful gaze of the other two members of the Abyss Disaster Group, he still gave back with a smile, looking extremely calm. This is the Academy. Killing other students in broad daylight, but being held accountable by the inspectors, you wouldn't want to bury them, would you? His words immediately calmed both sides down. Lu Yi, with a fierce expression on his face, knew that the opponent's basic strength was still above his own, but he had not learned combat skills or weapons and equipment. He said eerily, let's see. After saying a harsh word, Louis returned to his bed. His forehead was still dripping blood, looking quite disheveled. Humph. Kuo wiped away the scar on his chest, snorted coldly, and returned to the side of two starving ghosts in the abyss. Gao Shu. The name of this mediator left a deep impression on Chen Mo at the banquet. Du Qingqing lowered her head on the side, tears swirling in her eyes. Du Fang Yen kept whispering comfort to him. When Han Shui passed by Charcoal and Chen Mo, she didn't even glance at them and walked straight towards the group of three who had no place to suffer. The four of them started whispering. Chen Mo felt a little sad about this while the charcoal beside him had no psychological burden. It seems that besides Lei Wu, the strongest person in the class should be Gao Shu. Charcoal's indifference to cold snow seems completely indifferent. These adult starving ghosts, if they have one or two green quality equipment in their hands, combined with their combat skills, the abyss starving ghosts are no match and have offended them. Humph, when the time comes for the starving ghosts' trial, they don't even know how to die. Chen Mo, who had a slight liking for him, also calmed down as he realized that Charcoal was actually gloating. Although he is somewhat clever, he finds it difficult to climb to the top of the class. He seemed completely unaware of what Chen Mo was thinking in his heart. As the captain of this temporary team, since he can naturally give up on cold snow now, what will happen to him in the future? After all, he is theoretically the captain of this temporary team, but he is not aware of his responsibility. If one day, I become the captain and take on leadership responsibilities, I will never let my team members behave like this, let alone gloat. Time quickly arrived late at night. The spacious dormitory gradually quieted down, and everyone was already asleep, while Chinimo tossed and turned unable to sleep. The experience of the traveler in these two days has undergone too many twists and turns. He must adapt to this cruel world as soon as possible. The Distressed River Disaster Academy will conduct a 100-day basic training here, followed by what they call the Hungry Ghost Trial. If successful, one will advance to become a level 1 natural disaster predator and become the lowest level warrior in the disaster world. If unsuccessful, one will be eliminated and face a dead end. Next is my current class. In addition to mentor Ching Hong, there are a total of 14 starving ghost students, who have now been divided into four small groups. 
That mysterious Lei Wu, who came from a mysterious background, is a unique entity. Five adult starving ghosts all possess impressive abilities. In addition to Fai Xiejiang, who was fighting for a bed with him, Tian Tian, who was scolded by Lei Wu, Lui, who had just caused conflicts, and Gao Xu, who was the mediator, there was also a relatively quiet girl. When introducing herself at the banquet, Chen Imo remembered that her name should be Levi. Three starving ghosts from the abyss huddled tightly together. Apart from the conflict with Lu Yi, there were two other people, one male and one female, named Gitu and Taozi. Although they had not yet taken action, it was not difficult to see from their sharp eyes that they were not easy to deal with. Now it seems that Han Shui has the intention of joining this group. The remaining charcoal, Du Fang Yen, Du Qingqing, Han Shui, and myself are the bottom floor of the dormitory. Han Shui and herself are better off, so they should be considered orphans by default. They are afraid of their potential, while others maintain a certain level of vigilance. But in the eyes of these guys, charcoal, Du Fang Yen, and Du Qingqing may have become lambs waiting to be slaughtered and can be oppressed and trampled on at will. From the principles of these starving ghosts, it can be seen that they truly adhere to the principle of the law of the jungle. As long as one does not demonstrate sufficient potential, corresponding strength, and courage to resist in the future, let alone the hungry ghost trial, whether one can complete these 100 days of enlightenment training alive is probably a question. Take a deep breath. Chen Imo patted his cheek. In order to survive, he decided to adopt an emergency evacuation mechanism, temporarily forgetting his socialist harmonious values and adapting to this cruel world as soon as possible. Get stronger. To adapt to this world and become stronger, Chen Mo's first step is to understand this world. When you are weak, try to be as low dot key as possible to avoid unnecessary trouble, but this low dot key attitude is not like being a turtle with a shrunken head, otherwise it will only make the abuser more reckless. Therefore, even when you are weak, you must not let the enemy doubt whether you have the courage to die together, which would rather be shattered than destroyed. Thinking of something, Chen Mo's mind moved and his data dot driven panel reappeared in his eyes. Name Traveler Level Hungry Ghost Talent Stone Skin Qi and Blood 140, Defense 6, Speed 6, Strength 8, Physical Fitness 14, Spirit 23, Energy 10, Basic Fist Technique LV1 Basic Chopping LV1 Basic Block LV2 Equipment. None. Skill. None. As an amateur online game player, Chen Imo is not unfamiliar with this type of attribute panel. It should be an optical brain data chip implanted in the back of his neck, which digitizes his physical functions. The name Traveler is undoubtedly one's own ID. It is strange that this sense of technology is completely incompatible with the rough style of the world even using plundered machinery as an explanation seems a bit far-fetched. There should be some deep dot seated secrets hidden here. Level Hungry Ghost After Chen Imo focused his attention on the level of the data panel, corresponding data information came to his mind. Starvation Ghost is a term used by Disaster World Level Zero Enlightenment Natural Disaster Sufferers. After passing the Disaster Academy's Starvation Ghost Trial, one will be promoted to a natural disaster predator and gain basic rights to external contract missions and war plunder in the disaster world. A brief explanation, Chen Imo pondered and continued to look down. Talent Stone Skin Natural disaster victims with the talent of Stone Skin can obtain an extra attribute of Defense plus 3. Dot. Qi and Blood 140 Qi and blood are the vitality of natural disaster victims, influenced by their physical attributes. They have a physical fitness coefficient of 10, and their qi and blood values do not include disability. When their qi and blood are below one-tenth, they enter a weak state, their full attributes are halved, 
and when their qi and blood are below 5, they enter a dying state. Defense 6. The defense value will reduce the damage suffered by the natural disaster victim. Every 10 points of physical fitness will passively increase defense by 1 point, and each level of basic block will increase defense by 1 point. It can be improved through armor equipment and can be improved through career evolution. Chenemo paused for a moment, and couldn't help but imagine the image of the stone being bullied by a monkey. This is also why his basic block has reached LV2, right? The stone skin talent increases defense by 3 points, physical fitness by 1 point, and basic block LV2 by 2 points, totaling 6 points of defense. Chenimo can now be considered as having rough skin and thick flesh. Speed 6. The speed attribute will affect speed, evasion, stealth, and the efficiency of combat skills affected by the speed coefficient. Strength 8. The power attribute will affect damage, burst, stamina, and the combat skill power affected by the power coefficient. Physical Fitness 14. Physical attributes will affect qi in blood, defense, regeneration, as well as combat skill power affected by physical fitness coefficient. Spirit 23. Spiritual attributes will affect perception, elements, mental power, and combat skill power influenced by mental coefficients. Chenemo paused for a moment. 23 points of spiritual power is his specialty as a time traveler, so it is worth him vigorously developing both emotionally and practically. Moreover, based on experience, this kind of expertise often represents superpowers, which can maintain safe distance output and is indeed the most attractive. As for the three evolutionary directions of perception, elements, and memory influenced by mental power, Chenemo has not yet considered the direction of evolution. It is better to wait for careful study before making a decision. Then he looked at his energy attributes. Energy 10. Energy attributes affect the volume of storage space eroded by natural disasters, as well as the number of times skills are activated. Because the stone is too stupid, it did not learn the most important skill of natural disaster erosion, which is the basic skill of the natural disaster victim, representing the eerie laws of time and space in the disaster world, as well as the predatory survival attribute of the natural disaster victim. Chenimo is determined to master this skill as soon as possible. Basic Fist Technique LV1 Basic boxing techniques affect basic attacks, the ability to learn boxing combat skills, and the power of boxing combat skills. Basic Chopping LV1 Basic Chopping affects the basic attack of weapon chopping, affects the ability to learn weapon chopping combat skills, and affects the power of weapon chopping combat skills. Basic Block LV2 Basic Blocks affect defense strength, ability to learn defensive combat skills, and power of defensive combat skills. Equipment None The equipment is divided into six compartments. Weapon, Armor, Helmet, Shoes, Accessory 1, and Accessory 2. Skill None Skill, Enlightenment disaster sufferers have four innate skill grids, which can be increased by up to two through the Enlightenment stone. They can also forget related skills through the nine usher. Skill grids belong to the benefits of the optical brain data chip gifted to junior disaster sufferers. Junior disaster sufferers can quickly learn combat skills through skill scrolls, while advanced disaster sufferers need to develop relevant professional skills on their own. Regarding the skill scroll, Stone has seen it with his mother. It is said that this reward can only be obtained through other creatures in the world, and it is divided into two forms. One type is physical form, similar to mind notes, which are carefully written by the owner based on their own experience, often as personal notes or inheritance items. However, this type of skill has relatively few scrolls, and the advantage is that the disaster victim's optical brain data chip can quickly read and convert it into soul memory learning. Another type is the form of nothingness, which refers to the soul memory fragments captured by the time and space erosion law of the natural disaster victim after the owner's death. 
This skill has relatively many scrolls and requires the natural disaster victim to bring it back to the disaster world for data-driven identification or consume a resource called the Soul Stone in order to learn and master it. But the prerequisite for learning these combat skills is often to have corresponding basic attributes and skills as prerequisites. Only after meeting the learning requirements can one master them. After studying his own attribute panel, Chen Mo made a plan. Firstly, it is important to quickly grasp the erosion of storage space by natural disasters. If one does not even master this basic ability, it is inevitable that others will underestimate it, leading to bullying and conflict. Secondly, it is important to choose a direction for the development of one's spiritual strengths and use it to learn and exercise corresponding basic skills, in order to enhance one's strength as soon as possible. Then there is the stone skin talent of the stone, and the combination of physical strengths and this talent is also worth developing, after all, only by living can we have everything. Finally, we need to make up for the shortcomings. With only 6 points of speed and 8 points of strength, his basic skill level is also pitifully low, which is his flaw. Chenimo has no doubt that if he were to conflict with Louis at this level, even with rough skin and thick flesh, it would only be a matter of being hit a few more times, and he wouldn't be able to run. After making these plans, Chenimo finally gradually fell asleep in exhaustion. End of this chapter Chapter 6 College Life You are listening at NovelFull.audio Chapter 6 College Life The Next Day Chen Mo was awakened by the sound of dripping water. He stood up and looked at the clock. It was only 5.30 p.m., and the adult starving ghost group of five in the dormitory had already been dressed. When he looked at the other people in the room, Lei Wu and Han Shui were nowhere to be seen. As for the sound just now, it was the sound of Fixiajang washing up. As the five of them quietly left the room, Chenimo instinctively felt that there must be some secret inside, so he quickly got up and washed up, wanting to get a glimpse. What time is it? The charcoal on the side was awakened by Chenimo, and he looked at the time in a daze before continuing to lie down. The class time is still early, what's the rush? The cold water instantly awakened Chenimo. After quietly washing up, he tiptoed out of the room to avoid disturbing the rest of others, and then he was shocked by the scene before him. I saw that there were already hundreds of people practicing in the morning in the vast exercise area of the college. Some people exercise in the equipment area, some use randomly placed stones to lift weights, some sit quietly in the corner for meditation, and more people run long distances, sweat dripping down their cheeks. Chenimo noticed the nearby Louis. At this moment, he was repeatedly making chopping and stabbing postures, with an extremely serious and meticulous demeanor. There's no secret. Chen Mo, who witnessed all of this, felt a hint of shame. This reminded him of his endless journey of learning, where he used to wake up early and study under the stars and wear the moon every day, and then return to his dormitory late at night to study for half an hour. It's not just oneself striving. Every person with an ideal goal is striving for their own ideals, even if they are a bad person or a negative character, they still have their own persistence. Thinking of his pitifully low speed attribute, Chenemo took a deep breath, adjusted his mentality, and decided to join this struggle full of positive energy and motivation, starting to run with the crowd. There are people around constantly surpassing Chenemo at a faster pace. Some of them have even run several laps, and Chen Mo was already panting after just half a lap. In terms of strength and speed, before crossing, Chen Mo and Shi Shi were almost at the same level. The training area of the Disaster Academy was very large, and after one lap, it was about 2,000 meters. Chen Mo ran as hard as he could, and immediately knelt on one knee, gasping for breath and sweat dripping down. After vigorous running, it is necessary to walk for a period of time to relieve leg pressure. The sound in his ear made Chen Mo couldn't help but look up. It turned out that Qing Hong, the mentor, had passed by him and seemed to have run several laps here. Are even mentors exercising? The stubbornness of not accepting defeat made Chen Mo grit his teeth tightly, and according to his mentor's instructions, 
he stumbled forward. The sky is gradually brightening, and there are few people left to exercise. However, Chenimo is one of the few remaining personnel. He felt as heavy as a thousand pounds on his body and persisted in walking on the playground for two laps before finally walking towards the dining area exhausted. He must finish his meal before class. There are free livelihood meals in the gathering place. This world seems to have been classified into different levels of food for disaster victims due to data-driven reasons. The so-called sustenance meal refers to inferior food that does not fall into the category. Compared to yesterday's high. And food, it is naturally a huge difference. As for what a livelihood meal is, even though Chinimo has some psychological preparation, his face is still quite ugly after seeing his breakfast. With the rumbling sound of the machine, Chenimo looked at the paste in the plate and couldn't believe it. The so-dot called livelihood meal is actually just a paste, made from unknown organic matter crushed into a paste-like food. Even if this paste is made from a mixture of various garbage, cockroaches, and earthworms behind it, it cannot be verified now. The cafeteria is filled with jingling sounds everywhere. That was the sound of metal spoons colliding with the plates of starving ghosts. Chen Limo noticed that there were also some people whose food on the plates was bread or something similar to noodles, but without exception, they all purchased it from the consumer window. These people, like Lei Wu, were obviously given natural disaster contribution points by their families in the first place after being connected to the data chip, in order to consume here. The reason why the college provides a free premium food for every newly enrolled starving ghost clearly has some underlying intentions. Time is running out. Chenimo gulped down the paste. Fortunately, apart from a slight salty taste, the livelihood meal does not have any special taste. It is only a food used to maintain basic survival. Chen Mo worked hard to adapt to this kind of food, not to think recklessly, and after finishing a big bite, he quickly ran towards the teaching building. The classroom is very large. Amidst the silent waiting of fourteen people, Master Ching Hong walked into the classroom. Today she surprisingly put on heavy makeup, with fiery red lips that were particularly beautiful, even giving Chen Mo a sense of familiarity, as if she had returned to high school life. Hello everyone, before teaching you basic skills, first of all, please tell me why you want to become a natural disaster victim. This is important because only those who know why they live are qualified to live better. Master Ching Hong's words were very calm, standing on the high platform and looking around at everyone. Because I want to become stronger. Because I want to control my own destiny. Because I want to become a great natural disaster monarch. Because. Everyone answered one by one, and Master Ching Hong kept nodding. Until the last person responded, she calmly said, Actually, the fundamental goal of the disaster victims is only one, and that is not to starve to death. The words of mentor Ching Hong immediately resonated with many people in the audience, including Chen Mo. To live and not starve to death is such a simple and unadorned explanation. So we can only contribute to natural disasters by making ourselves stronger, obtain food, and ensure that we don't starve to death. This is why we call level zero natural disaster victims starving ghosts. Because in a barren disaster world, it is necessary to save all unnecessary resources and forcibly eliminate useless waste. Therefore, in a disaster world, we believe that violence can solve everything. At this point, some people in the class are already boiling with enthusiasm, while others look timid and guilty. We live in an endless world, with an infinite number of worlds. The living environment and cultural laws of each world are completely different. Some worlds are rich and prosperous, some are extremely cold and hot, some are surrounded by thunder, and some are endless oceans. The rulers of different worlds have also created different cultural civilizations. After a pause, she continued, and in our disaster world, the natural law is rootless duckweed. The sky has no sun, moon, and stars, the earth has no vitality, and even metal ores. Therefore, we cannot cultivate, mine, or produce. 
I have explored more than ten worlds, and even those so dot called harsh and barren environments have much better living conditions than disaster worlds. So as natural disaster victims, we need to constantly fulfill the demands of summoners from other worlds, satisfy their infinite desires through employment relationships, and continuously erode these worlds shrouded in desire and hatred, in order to obtain more survival resources Ching Hong's words made everyone present a bit suppressed. The barrenness of the disaster world is indeed confirmed by Chen Mo's memory in the stones. The entire world is covered with rocks, sand and ash, bones, and rivers. The people here seem to live on the moon, and it is a miracle that life can continue in such a world. There is no sun or moon in the sky, and no vitality in the earth. It is not an exaggeration to say that a disaster world is like a rootless duckweed. However, although the disaster world has not provided us with a prosperous living environment, it has provided us with convenient conditions to become strong, that is, the powerful power of time and space laws. Compared with the insurmountable world barriers between other worlds, our process of traveling between different worlds is undoubtedly much easier. Therefore, the disaster world has established close connections with many other worlds, appearing in various conflicts and enriching our combat experience. This is the only survival capital for us natural disaster victims. Speaking of which, Master Ching Hong's face surprisingly showed a hint of undisguised pride. She is proud of herself as a natural disaster victim. After experiencing the Hungry Ghost Trial, you will have the opportunity to actively apply to participate in the natural disaster mission once a month. However, whether or not to cherish this opportunity is entirely up to you. The disaster world is not mandatory and this loose regulation has also given many opportunities for natural disaster infestation. Worms roam the gathering place every day, living the dirtiest and most lowly life. They would rather make a living by relying on their daily sustenance, even if it is necessary expenses. For them, it is just selling their bodies, relying on seeking others' pleasure to obtain pitiful alms, rather than carrying out natural disaster missions. At this point, a hint of hatred and disdain appeared on the green and red face. She looked around at the crowd and said, I hope there is no such person among you. Not only her, but the vast majority of the class showed disdain for it. Except for those with limited gathering places in the disaster world, such as Ching Hong mentors who are directly employed by the great disaster monarch as civil servants, other long dot term work can almost be seen as a shame for disaster victims. For those affected by natural disasters, constantly becoming stronger and moving towards death is the ultimate mission, while monotonous and tedious work is the life of a slave. When performing a natural disaster mission externally, the natural disaster victims are usually passively summoned by creatures from other worlds in a contractual manner. The natural disaster victims will complete the corresponding contractual tasks in both individual and team modes. When obtaining fixed mission benefits, we will also obtain some additional resources during the mission process, but this requires us to do so without violating the mission contract. Or The value of these resources has far exceeded the contractual penalty speaking of which, Master Ching Hong's expression is very meaningful. Some people in the class seem to understand but not quite, while others appear to be confused. That is to say, when the benefits are huge enough, the natural disaster victim can betray the contract. Sometimes, large dot scale wars may occur between different gathering places within the disaster world due to various conflicts. At that time, all natural disaster victims in the gathering places will arrange war missions indiscriminately, which is usually referred to as the apocalyptic mission. Of course, this is just the lowest difficulty and most common apocalyptic mission, and there are also some even more terrifying situations, which are the great natural disaster monarchs launching war and plunder missions against other worlds. At that time, we can only wish you good luck Master Ching Hong looked around with a sneer, but at this moment, everyone couldn't understand the horror of the apocalyptic mission she was talking about. She looked a little confused and looked at each other. Ching Hong, the mentor, did not intend to provide a specific description. She continued, although the doomsday mission is very dangerous, it will also come with huge profits after completing it. 
The natural disaster rulers often give some special rewards, and this is actually when gathering to clean up the borers. When it comes to moths, Master Qinghong almost gritted his teeth with a look of deep disgust. So if you don't want to die aimlessly in the post-apocalyptic mission in the future, it's best for you to work hard to become stronger in your daily life, and don't become those boring insects waiting to die, you know. Got it. Mentor Qinghong warned everyone and smiled again after receiving a satisfactory response. After a series of explanations from Mentor Qinghong, Chenemo finally has a preliminary understanding of the way natural disaster victims survive. The disaster world can be divided into two parts. The period of peaceful development and the period of apocalyptic war. During the period of peaceful development, natural disaster victims will travel to various worlds as individuals or teams to complete entrusted tasks, and in the process, plunder resources and enhance their strength. During the apocalyptic war, natural disaster victims will be forcibly summoned by the natural disaster monarchs in their gathering places to carry out so. Called apocalyptic missions. Time passes by. Four hours passed quickly. The course for the hungry ghost students is only half a day, and the afternoon is considered free time. Lunch is still a livelihood meal. Chenimo faced these mushy foods and tried to appear calm. Like other starving ghosts from natural disasters, he imagined these mushy foods as various delicacies and swallowed them in large gulps. After dinner, Chen Emo came to the college library. The overcrowding he imagined did not occur. Compared to learning and improving in the library, disaster victims seemed to be more enthusiastic about exercising and strengthening themselves through practice. After lunch, there will still be many starving ghosts gathering in the square, even Charcoal, Du Fang Yen, and Du Qingqing siblings joining in and exercising in various ways. However, as a traveler, Chen Imo is undoubtedly more accustomed to solving theoretical problems through book knowledge. After entering the library, Chen Imo quickly found the information he needed. Firstly, there is information about natural disasters eroding storage spaces. To gain the ability to be eroded by natural disasters, one must first be eroded by natural disasters and become a member of this world. This is not a problem for stones who were born and grew up in a disaster world, but for creatures from other worlds, it is a fantasy. Secondly, it is necessary for disaster victims to sense the natural energy in their bodies and exercise a certain degree of control over this energy, rather than allowing it to settle like stagnant water in their bodies. Finally, imagination is needed, which is also a crucial step. That is to imagine oneself as a part of a disaster world, in layman's terms, to imagine oneself as a whole cell of the world, and then open storage spaces of different sizes based on one's own energy value. Overall, for the vast majority of natural disaster victims, this is almost effortless. Many starving ghosts naturally learn it in their childhood, just like walking and speaking. After pondering for a moment, Chenimo turned to another stack of materials. The evolutionary direction of spiritual specialists, the level of spiritual power will affect the effects of perception, elements, and mental power, so those with strong spiritual power will generally develop in these three directions. Perception, as the name suggests, is the ability to detect unknown areas in the distance or behind obstacles through mental power. The professions formed often have ultra-long-range strike capabilities, similar to sentinels and snipers, with extremely powerful detection and pursuit abilities, often taking the lead. Elements, on the other hand, weave the structure of energy through spiritual weaving, and then activate various elemental magic. Lei Wu used this as his evolutionary method, and his basic elemental skill level reached an astonishing level of LV11. Mindfulness is the use of spiritual power to enchant matter, similar to making a stone fly, bending a spoon, or creating a protective shield. It cannot be created out of nothing and must be activated using matter as a carrier. The afternoon passed unnoticed. The library is closing at 6 p.m. and it's dinner time again. Chen Imo copied a copy of the collected information and was about to leave the library when he suddenly stopped and looked at the middle-aged female mentor wearing glasses. He tentatively asked, Hello, do you need an administrator here? 
I think I can help you. Are you sure? Are you going to work here? The other party seems somewhat surprised. After all, this job is too boring for the vast majority of disaster victims, and according to their habits, they may think it is the lowest way of life. The library has a considerable area, with an estimated number of tens of thousands of books inside. Although there are not many people coming here every day, at most only a few dozen people, there is not a single administrator. Even the substitute tutor in charge of closing the door is forced to come here part dot time, just to take care of it. Looking at Chen Mo's serious gaze, the middle dot aged female mentor supported the black eyeglass frame. I can pay you one point of natural disaster contribution as compensation for working from 2 p.m. to 6 p.m. every day. Okay. As a traveler, Chen Mo not only has no sense of inadequacy in his job. On the contrary, this job is simply one of the perfect transitional professions in some travel novels that can quickly adapt to life in a different world. Although the reward is only one point, based on the prices in the disaster world and not wanting to eat a livelihood meal, even low.level ordinary black bread requires one point. However, considering the convenience of this job and the fact that there are only four hours of work time per day, Chen Mo agreed without hesitation. End of this chapter Chapter 7 Storage Space You are listening at Novel Full.audio Chapter 7 Storage Space College Exercise Area There are significantly fewer people exercising here at night compared to noon. After dinner, Chen Mo sat down in a deserted corner and began to follow the methods and the materials to try to grasp the power of natural disasters and use it as a basis to open up storage space. Unconsciously, two hours have passed. As the weather gradually became colder, Chen Mo also felt a hint of coolness. But fortunately, he had already followed the method in the book and vaguely sensed the energy in his body, which was like a stagnant water, depositing inside his body. It wasn't until Chen Mo began to consciously call out that he gradually received a response and became lively. This feeling is like transitioning from instinctive breathing to conscious breathing regulation. Controlling the power of natural disaster erosion is not difficult for disaster victims, just like learning to speak. On the contrary, it is strange for those who have not mastered this skill. But even so simple, under the patient guidance of his mother, the stone still hasn't been mastered for more than a decade. If it weren't for the fact that the stone has the talent for stone skin, it would have been abandoned by his mother long ago, after all, stone skin talent is not a high dot level talent. The final result is obvious. Stone's mother, ultimately defeated by his foolishness, chose to give up. Buzz. Chen Mo opened his palm. A black gray energy, almost visible to the naked eye, permeated in the palm of the hand. Success. The final step in unlocking storage space is to immerse oneself in a disaster world and imagine oneself as a part of it. The weather is gradually getting colder, but research has made progress, so Chenimo naturally does not want to interrupt at this time. He starts following the instructions on the data and continues to try. Imagining oneself as a part of a disaster world Chen Mo closed his eyes. On one side is the erosive energy within oneself, like a water flower, stirring within. On the other side is a world of disaster, vast land, boundless desolation, gray sky, dry and tasteless, like an endless dead sea. Chen Mo recalled the scenes he saw on his way to the Disaster Academy, searching for the memories of the disaster world in the memory of the stone. Various skeletons persisted on the wasteland, becoming the only scenery in the barren disaster world. Time passes by. When Chen Mo opened his eyes again, a storage space suddenly appeared in his eyes. This is an irregular virtual cube, with the longest straight distance of about one meter and the shortest distance of less than half a meter, like a twisted stone. Chen Mo tried to grab it forward, and like others, his palm easily extended into the independent space after entering this void area. Success Chen Mo's surprised murmur was so simple. The ability that Stone had not mastered for over a decade, he succeeded in just a few hours. He excitedly picked up a stone, 
and as the natural disaster energy in his hand eroded and penetrated, he indeed sent the stone into the storage space. When he withdrew his palm, the stone remained in the storage space. The name, natural disaster erodes storage space, comes from the fact that in order to place an object in this independent storage space, the first step must be through natural disaster erosion. In other words, items must be eroded by the special energy of the disaster world. To ensure that items are eroded by natural disaster energy, it is necessary to ensure that the eroded material cannot be protected by other energies, such as treasures that have undergone the ceremony of recognizing the Lord, things that have been banned and protected, and so on. Even living beings with resistance consciousness are not suitable. Unless it is an unconscious spiritual plant or a summoning creature of certain special professions that require specialized cultivation and voluntary cooperation from the summoning object, it can only proceed. The most important thing is. Organic matter in general food also tends to decay quickly and cannot be preserved for a long time under the erosion of natural disaster energy. Therefore, natural disaster victims are unable to bring food back from a foreign world through storage space. They can only obtain it through the large dot scale invasion of natural disaster rulers, tearing apart the cracks in time and space, and direct transportation. And it is precisely because of the existence of these natural disaster energies that after the death of the disaster victim, not only will it be their storage space, but even their bodies will also be recycled by the disaster world, feeding back the disaster world. This is a special temporal and spatial law of the disaster world that cannot be resisted. In the late night of the disaster world, the temperature is almost approaching zero degrees. Chen Emo could no longer tolerate this severe cold. After experiencing the initial excitement, he quickly got up and returned to the dormitory. However, on the way back, he was surprised to find that there were still people silently exercising and even practicing combat skills, constantly releasing skills to improve proficiency, until his energy was depleted before returning to the dormitory. Gently close the door, and everyone else in the dormitory is already asleep. After washing up a little, Chen Imo quickly lay down in bed, feeling tired and quickly fell asleep. Time flies by quickly. It seems that just as I closed my eyes, it was already the next morning. It was the same group of people who woke up early and finished washing up, but this time cold snow had not left yet. After noticing that Chen Mo had also woken up, they looked at him in surprise. Although very tired, Chen Mo struggled to get up from the blanket, washed himself briefly, and went to the exercise area alone. He first persisted in running one lap, then walked two more laps to restore his leg muscles. Although the process was very painful, it seemed to be much better than yesterday, which gave him a sense of satisfaction and was very fulfilling. Breakfast time. Still the simplest livelihood meal, he quickly walked to the classroom. You woke up early these past few days, which made me wake up too. There's no need to work so hard, it's not short of time. The charcoal made Chen Imo feel a bit uncomfortable. When he had just gained immense satisfaction from fulfilling his life, he felt a bit uncomfortable hearing such discouraging words, so he did not respond to them. Moreover, he was not the only one who woke him up. Mentor Ching Hong still arrived on time. This time she also brought some books and materials, and everyone carefully observed, among which was the natural disaster erosion storage space data that Chen Imo only read yesterday. She smiled and looked at the crowd. Today, we will learn the technique of natural disasters eroding storage spaces. This is the most basic ability of all natural disaster victims, representing our identity and strength as natural disaster victims. I believe that everyone present here should have already mastered this ability, after all, this is our fundamental ability as natural disaster victims. Halfway through, Master Ching Hong suddenly remembered something. Don't tell me, some of you still haven't mastered the storage space. Upon hearing this, Chen Mo's body tensed and seemed a bit nervous, while his heart breathed a sigh of relief. What a close call. If I hadn't taken the time yesterday to master this ability, if I were publicly named here today, the consequences would be needless to say. 
Chen Emo knew with his feet that in the next few decades, he would probably become the despised object of everyone in the class, and in the eyes of his mentor, he would be no different from a waste. It's like in a key class in high school, someone who doesn't know multiplication formulas is ridiculous. And my current strength is so weak that I can say I have no combat ability at all. Once I am looked down upon by others, I will inevitably be accompanied by bullying, even blatant bullying. Chen Emo doesn't want to live like Du Fang Yen. I haven't. Just as Chen Emo breathed a sigh of relief, a timid voice came from behind. Chen Emo looked towards the sound and it turned out to be Du Qingqing. She lowered her head, so anxious that tears were about to flow out of her eyes, afraid to face the astonished and contemptuous gazes around her. You. After being shocked, Master Qinghong's originally smiling face suddenly turned icy cold. The disaster world never sympathizes with inferior warriors, especially when she sees too many worms. Really, you are such a genius. I didn't expect such a strange thing to happen in my class. Humph, I see it's useless for you to continue listening here. My class is not suitable for a genius like you. I want you to get out of my class right away and never come again. Chen Emo was stunned at the words. He couldn't believe that the mentor who had been so amiable the previous moment was now so strict and demanding. If I hadn't taken the time to master the storage space last night, the consequences would have been so severe. Being scolded by my only mentor like this would have meant that after being abandoned by my family, I was once again abandoned by the official authorities of the disaster world, completely becoming an incurable useless person. In some ways, it is equivalent to a catastrophic world sentencing this person to death. Wu Wu. Du Qingqing was at a loss, with red circles around her eyes and sobbing loudly in her seat. She begged to look at her mentor, hoping to give her a chance, and also to look at others, hoping that someone could plead for her. She couldn't help but approach her brother and shake his arm, but no one stood up to speak for her. Get out of here immediately. Qing Hong, the mentor, almost roared and strode towards her. At this moment, her body had transformed into countless strange tattoos, and a pair of deer antlers had grown on her head, resembling a millennium-old demon. She picked up Du Qingqing's clothes, walked a few steps to the classroom door, and casually threw them out. It's like throwing out an unsightly piece of garbage that can't be resisted at all. Such an imposing demeanor really scared Chen Emo. As his older brother, Du Fang Yen's face turned red and his ears turned red. He clenched his fists tightly, but as before, he remained a coward, sitting silently, watching this cruel scene unfold. The charcoal beside him chuckled softly at Chen Emo. She's too stupid, right? I mastered it when I was nine years old. He seemed to want to highlight his superiority through this, but in Chen Mo's eyes, he was even more disappointed in him deep down. At first, I thought he was a potential leader of a small group, but now this small group has long been estranged. His own efforts have become useless, and I don't know what to be complacent about here. He doesn't have the temperament that a leader should have. Ignoring the sobs outside the classroom, Qing Hong mentor seemed to change her face and regain her smile, as if she had stepped on a cockroach to death. The absence of one person was completely irrelevant to her. Next, let's start learning the depth techniques of storage space. She began to elaborate on the historical significance of natural disasters eroding storage spaces, as well as some practical techniques. Du Qingqing's incident was like a wake. Up call to everyone. Everyone was focused on listening to Master Qinghong's explanation. Although it was not a profound knowledge or skill, it was very practical. Chen Emo finally realized that the reason why his storage space was irregular was because the number of times he activated this skill was too small. Otherwise, it should be a perfect sphere, so he had to practice hard. As for other things to pay attention to, it is the recognition feature of the equipment. Because the equipment of natural disaster victims will undergo erosion before wearing, which is a disguised form of owner protection. Once the owner dies, these equipment will often be recycled by the disaster world along with other items in the storage space and cannot be taken away by others. 
In this way, there is generally no act of killing or looting between natural disaster victims. Of course, removing protection is also quite easy. After all, it is common for disaster victims to trade with each other, as the original owner only needs to recover the energy of the disaster. Moreover, this kind of identity recognition only eliminates the general act of killing and looting, but the actual situation is often much more complex. For example, it is entirely possible to choose to imprison the other party and threaten them to voluntarily release. When these vivid examples were spoken by Master Ching Hong, they really made Chinimo feel waves of malice. As for other worlds, although there are also many such modes of recognizing the owner, and even extreme prohibitions that will not be lifted even after the owner's death, they are relatively rare. And compared to the situation where equipment will be automatically recovered by the disaster world once natural disaster victims die, most of the equipment on the body of other world creatures will become ownerless except for those who recognize their master with blood dripping. Of course, there are also some special circumstances. For example, some individuals who require recognition of certain bloodline identities or martial arts qualifications due to special prohibitions cannot be eroded by natural disasters or brought back to the world of disasters. The most important point. The items in the storage space must have magical properties, that is, the material properties must reach at least white quality, otherwise the contents inside will be like food organic matter, gradually decayed by natural disaster energy and cannot be stored for a long time. End of this chapter. Chapter 8 Basic Mindfulness LV1 You are listening at NovelFull.audio Chapter 8 Basic Mindfulness LV1 After lunch, Chen Mo came to the library. With the identity of a librarian, Chen Mo can easily use the books here to quickly understand the world. It is not without reason that knowledge changes destiny. There aren't many people in the library. After all, most natural disaster victims believe that violence can solve everything, so there won't be the overcrowding scene that Chinemo imagined here. Only when encountering certain difficulties and these natural disaster victims have considerable independent thinking wisdom, will they think of things like books. The books in the library come in various forms. There are animal skin paper scrolls, wooden boards, stone carvings, and bamboo slips. Chenimo even discovered metal paper, jade slips, and storage chips. Of course, the vast majority are ordinary paper books displayed on bookshelves of over 20 sizes. Work cannot be accomplished overnight. Chenimo plans to first categorize these books briefly, arrange the most prominent books outside neatly, and make the library look less messy. Then, during the following working hours, he will gradually organize the entire library to make it look more comfortable. After some hard work, two hours had passed unnoticed. Exhausted, Chen Mo wiped his sweat and decided to take a break before taking out the books he needed and sitting in the most prominent position of the library, studying them carefully. By nature, although Chen Mo was able to spend his working hours like a fool, he didn't want to do so. Perhaps it was a habit he had developed in his childhood. He had to handle everything carefully in order to fall asleep without psychological burden. At this moment, all the books that Chen Mo is reading are explanations about the development direction of spiritual talents. That is to say, the corresponding professional abilities of perception, elements, and memory, as well as the training methods of basic skills. The so dot called professionalization refers to the evolutionary direction of natural disasters, the systematic development of professional strengths, and the acquisition of vocational skills that do not occupy skill levels. This is also the key to the promotion of second-level natural disaster enhancers to third-level natural disaster disruptors, and is a process that requires long-term exploration, adaptation, and growth. Sentinels and snipers are the most representative professions in the evolution of perception. The characteristic of this profession is that it often anticipates danger earlier than others, takes action faster, and has a good detection effect on hidden units. The disadvantage is that it has poor survival adaptability and belongs to a relatively niche evolutionary direction. The evolution of elements is represented by elemental magicians and five element warlocks. 
The characteristic of this profession is its strong explosive power, often causing quite astonishing damage in a short period of time. It has strong control over the situation, but its disadvantage is the presence of attribute restraint and difficulty in sustaining energy consumption. The evolution of psychic power is represented by auxiliary psychics and summoners. The characteristics of this profession are delicate operation, flexible and versatile combat methods, strong survival adaptability, but the disadvantage is that the skill release distance is relatively close, and often requires close combat. Chenimo pondered over these three career choices for a long time. What ultimately led Chenimo to make a decision was the evaluation of his strong survival and adaptability in the introduction of those with exceptional mental abilities. The natural talent of stone skin, combined with one's own adaptability to the mind, fully utilizes each other's strengths, producing a 1 plus 1 greater than 2 effect. Since Chen Mo has made a decision, he will not easily change it again, but will continue to work towards the direction he has chosen. He stood up and began searching for the corresponding information of the psychic. Unconsciously, an afternoon passed like this. Did you encounter any trouble? After the middle aged female mentor wearing black framed glasses arrived at the library, she saw Chen Mo rearranging borrowed books neatly and asked with a satisfied expression. Hello. After respectfully greeting, Chen Mo replied, it's basically not much trouble, but the book categories here are too messy. I need a long time to organize them, and there are also some problems with the reading table here that need to be repaired. Hmm. In Chen Mo's surprise, the female mentor actually handed over a metal key. Since that's the case, I'll leave it to you from now on. My office is at 510, and if you need anything, you can come to me. From 2 p.m. to 6 p.m. every day, you will be responsible for the operation of the library. After pushing the frame of her glasses, she added, By the way, you can call me Professor Lulan. At the same time, a prompt came from the chip. Reminder. Lulan is increasing your natural disaster contribution points by one point. May I ask if you accept, yes slash no? Yes. Chen Mo's mind moved and a new prompt came from the chip. Tip. You have earned one natural disaster contribution. After Master Lu Lan left, Chen Mo looked at the key in his hand. It was an unintentional move, but he received a chip prompt again. Tip. White quality. Hmm. After a brief moment of shock, Chen Mo couldn't believe it and said, Magical materials. But soon he figured it out. If this key were not made of magical materials, it would have been corroded and decayed by Master Lolan's natural disaster energy long ago. It seems that this is also for the convenience of carrying. However, for Chen, this was an unexpected surprise. Because according to the information just collected, in order to exercise basic mental abilities, one needs to practice through meditation. The meditation method of basic mental power is different from that of basic elements, as it does not rely on natural energy as the object, but must rely on real matter as the object. According to the description on the information. Although ordinary matter can also be used as a meditation object, providing magical materials would be twice the result with half the effort, especially in the basic mental enlightenment stage. Whether to use magical materials as a meditation object and obtain basic mental LV1 at a speed will also be a huge difference. According to the records, some people meditate for several years without any effect, until one day, they use a magical equipment as their meditation object and successfully achieve the achievement of basic mind LV1 on the same day. Now that this magic key is used as a meditation target, it is undoubtedly an unexpected surprise for Chen Emo. After dinner, Chen Emo came to the exercise area. People who were constantly gasping for breath ran quickly past him, sweat dripping down. Chen Emo also ran two laps, completed the warm dot up exercise, and slowly walked to an empty corner. He took out the library key from the storage space. Mindfulness meditation requires the meditator to completely focus their attention on one point, 
which is completely different from remote sensing meditation based on basic perception and divergent meditation based on basic elements. Gradually, the surroundings seem to become quieter and quieter. It's like entering a focused state of early self. Study and reading aloud. Over the years of learning, Chen Imo quickly entered this state of mind free thinking. All attention was focused on this key, and its details seemed to expand infinitely with Chen Mo's focused observation. Its appearance, weight, material, temperature, hook teeth, and defects unconsciously, Chen Imo entered a mysterious state. In his perception, he was still observing the details of this key meticulously. But in the objective environment, at this moment, he had already closed his eyes, as if he had fallen asleep. Time passes by minute by second. The weather is getting colder and fewer people are in the exercise area. Suddenly, this key seems to have been affected by some kind of influence and made a slight movement. Gradually, the key seemed to be surrounded by a mysterious force field, with its vibration frequency increasing. Then, it unexpectedly floated up like anti-gravity, quietly floating in front of Chen Emo, standing in the air, motionless. After a long time, Chen Emo trembled and woke up from a meditative state. It's so cold, why did you fall asleep? His first reaction was that he had unknowingly fallen asleep. Then he couldn't help but think that he only learned about natural disasters eroding storage space late last night, and got up early to exercise in the morning. Perhaps he was too tired. Ding! The sound of the metal key falling made him momentarily stunned. Then, with his thoughts, the metal key swayed on the ground and flew towards his palm. After hesitating for a moment, he opened his attribute panel, and now in his basic skills, the words Basic Mindfulness LV1 appeared prominently. Successfully. Chen Mo couldn't believe it. Surprisingly, I succeeded so easily and gained basic mental skills. Is this probably related to one's high mental strength of 23 points? Although it is only a basic mental power LV1, it is a qualitative change from scratch, which means that Chen Mo will be able to utilize his high mental power expertise, which is to obtain a common attack method based on mental power attributes. With this in mind, he quickly focused his attention and tried to control the key again. The key easily floated up and floated slowly in the air according to his intention, even able to make rolling and rotating postures. However, to attack in this slow movement is undoubtedly a tickling sensation. With this in mind, he began to concentrate, as if he was accumulating energy. With a whoosh, the key suddenly flew towards the distance at an astonishing speed. Chen Emo, who made this blow, instinctively took a half step back, and then his eyes turned black, and a sense of weakness followed. This is like a child who has just learned how to throw, throwing the first stone with all their might. Oh no, this is the key to the library. After waking up, Chen Emo quickly ran towards the direction where he had just fired the key. The sky was completely dark, finding a small key was extremely difficult. Fortunately, it was already late at night and there were not many people. He could patiently search for it. Fifty meters away, Chen Emo finally found the key. Ha, huh, I'm scared to death. Chen Emo held the key and breathed a sigh of relief. He doesn't want to lose the job he just got. When he returned to the corner of the exercise area again, he quickly put the key in the storage space and dared not use it for experiments. Instead, he focused his attention on a stone the size of a walnut. The stone gradually drifted up. Shoo! Chen Emo once again launched it, and a brief sense of weakness arrived as expected. This is not due to Chen Mo's lack of skills, just like swinging his arm and throwing, there must be pauses during the process. Compared to the first experiment, Chen Mo's projection process this time has a clearer idea. It seems to be much closer than the distance of launching the key. When Chen Emo found the stone he had just launched, he knew that he was not an illusion, only about 20 meters long, and a few meters of it were affected by inertia. The actual distance at which the stone is fired by the force of the spell is only 20 meters. 
After several consecutive experiments, Chenemo also verified his hypothesis. The effective range of one's own psychic attack is only over 20 meters. If the target of the psychic attachment is a magical substance, the distance will be longer, but it is only about 30 meters. This looks similar to the distance thrown. But fortunately, after multiple tests, Chenemo found that the damage caused by objects fired through his psychic power within his effective killing range was also higher due to his spiritual attribute being much higher than his strength attribute. When throwing items with psychic power, within its effective range, the lethality will not decrease like throwing. If an object is thrown with the arm, the initial damage caused at close range is undoubtedly higher, but as the distance increases, the damage will gradually decrease, which is completely different from the nature of a mental attack. Through continuous experiments, Chenemo felt himself gradually becoming tired, his mental state greatly diminished, and his initial excitement gradually calmed down. The cold at night made him shiver uncontrollably, and he quickly ran back to the dormitory. End of this chapter Chapter 9 Learning Resources You are listening at NovelFull.audio Chapter 9 Learning Resources, Wait a Moment That morning, Charcoal suddenly spoke up and called out to Chinamo, who was about to go out for morning exercises. After a brief moment of shock, Chinamo noticed that Han Shui, who had always gone out for morning exercises earlier than him, had not yet gone out. Immediately, with the mysterious signal of Charcoal, Du Fang Yen also got up early and put on his clothes, and the four of them left the room together. Ching Ching won't come. Han Shui asked. Even if her mentor gave up on her, she shouldn't give up on herself. Du Fang Yen's face was slightly unsightly, but he shook his head without saying anything. What is so mysterious and mysterious? Du Fang Yen is not in a good mood. He likes to sleep until he wakes up naturally. At this time, the weather outside is too cold, making his upper and lower teeth tremble uncontrollably. Charcoal looked around and confirmed that no one was paying attention before whispering, Last night, I heard the conversation of the five of them. Starting today, Master Qinghong will be teaching basic skills. The words of Charcoal caught everyone's attention, with an eager and eager expression. Isn't that a good thing? Why are we called out? Han Shui was a bit puzzled and her tone was also very indifferent. Obviously, it was because there was a conflict with Louis on the first day of school, and the other few people did not have the relationship to step forward. With a ghostly expression on his face, Charcoal sighed and said, they have already agreed to bribe Master Qinghong before today's class. This is a rule that their families had already explained to them before they arrived at the academy. You should know that the cultivation equipment in the school is specially processed by the natural disaster monarch. If we use these equipment to exercise basic skills, it can be said that half the effort is twice the result. If the mentor opens a backdoor for them, wouldn't our gap be even greater? Everyone's faces turned ugly upon hearing these words. Unlike those adult starving ghosts, as abandoned or orphans, they simply do not have enough natural disaster contribution points or resources to bribe their mentors. Charcoal continued, and I've heard that because they have been teaching us enlightenment hungry ghosts all year round, the mentors in the college have mastered some special skills, especially suitable for improving basic skills below level 10. Therefore, if we can win the favor of mentors during the college period, it will greatly improve us. By the side. My mother told me that perseverance and hard work are far more important than any talent or cleverness, said Han Shui with a cold expression on her face the other few remained silent, which is really bad news. Chen Nemo is also contemplating his own situation. But unfortunately, he only contributed one point of points. If he were to bribe him with this, he would probably make things worse and be misunderstood as humiliating or mocking by the Qing Hong mentor. Actually, I have an idea. Charcoal took a deep breath and looked at the crowd, saying, I know everyone has difficulties, but we can try to concentrate our resources on one person as much as possible. The saying goes, good steel is used on the blade, so that one person in our small group can grow first, and then help others. What do you think? Hmph. 
needless to say, that person must be you, right? Han Shui sneered charcoal naturally said, yes, but it's not for me alone, but for everyone's sake. This is the most reasonable way for our small group to allocate resources. Sorry, I have something else to attend to. I apologize for not being able to accompany you. Cold snow bypassed the charcoal and ran towards the crowd of people practicing in the morning. Chen Imo also politely said, I'm afraid I'll disappoint you. I really don't have anything to offer here, but thank you for your reminder. After speaking, Chen Imo also started today's morning exercise. Du Fang Yen, on the other hand, didn't know what he had said to charcoal. Charcoal looked furious and then returned to the dormitory alone. After standing in place for a while, Du Fang Yen slowly walked back. After morning exercise, Chen Emo came to the cafeteria. He noticed four mentors guarding in front of the cafeteria gate, their faces very serious, as if something had happened. Charcoal, Du Fang Yen, Du Qingqing, and Han Shui stood at the entrance of the cafeteria. After seeing Chen Emo, they greeted him and signaled for him to come over. There are many people in the cafeteria, most of whom are small groups discussing their basic attributes and skill strength, while others are discussing interesting stories in the college. A few people came to an empty dining table with plates filled with paste and sat down. Last night, a starving ghost died in the exercise area. It is said that he is one of the strongest in their class and will be participating in the starving ghost trial in less than 10 days. As a result, his body was found in the corner of the exercise area this morning. Charcoal spoke solemnly. Exploring such information and intelligence is his favorite thing to do. Han Shui heard the words and said, I just heard about it. It is said that the basic martial arts level of this starving ghost has reached at least LV8, with strength and speed above 15 points. As a result, he died like this. In Chen Mo's class, this attribute value is definitely the strongest person besides Lei Wu. With basic attributes and skills alone, it is enough to suppress the few adult starving ghosts in the class. Hiss, how does the school plan to handle this matter? Du Fang Yen was somewhat frightened and kept looking around, as if it was not safe here either. I just eavesdropped on those mentors' conversations and said that as usual, because there was no movement at the crime scene last night and no one noticed anything unusual, suicide will be used as the investigation result. Everyone couldn't help but sigh upon hearing these words. In a world of disaster, the weak never receive sympathy. Even within the college, although there are strict regulations prohibiting harm to others at will, if the victim dies silently without even a chance to call for help, in the college's view, it is still a deserved death and they are too lazy to investigate further. Even such a strong person can die inexplicably in the academy now, let alone Chen Emo and his group. Hello traveler, weren't you the latest to come back yesterday? Did you hear anything? Upon hearing this, Chen Mo's face turned quite ugly. Last night, he returned to the dormitory quite late to practice his basic mental ability. During this time, he also ran several times, feeling proud to master his basic mental ability LV1. He never thought the danger was so close, and he was completely unaware of it. It seems that we need to be more careful in the future. After shaking his head with an unpleasant expression on Chen Mo's face, everyone stopped asking further questions. You, what are you doing? Du Qingqing's frightened voice made Chen Mo and the others couldn't help but look, and their faces changed. Unexpectedly, the bandit in Lui never gave up and once again approached Du Qingqing, sitting down next to her. Du Qingqing showed a frightened expression, looking very scared. She moved towards Du Fangyan, who then looked at Han Shui. However, with her previous experience, Han Shui was too lazy to meddle in these matters anymore. Charcoal, not to mention, looked as if nothing had been seen. Chen Imo felt a bit speechless when he saw this. This is your sister. However, this time, Louis did not make any further moves. He chuckled and placed the plate in his hand in front of Du Qingqing. A steaming aroma wafted from the plate, 
including a few pieces of fish, a small plate of curry, a few slices of bread, and some mashed potatoes. Compared to the paste on everyone's plates, it's a world of difference. Gudu. Everyone couldn't help but swallow their saliva, even the cold snow was no exception. Louis proudly said, here it is for you. For me. Du Qingqing couldn't believe it. Looking at the wonderful food on the plate, she reluctantly swallowed her saliva again. After a moment of hesitation, she was overcome by desire and couldn't help but swallow the delicious food on the plate. How about it? If you follow me, you can eat these delicious foods every day in the future. Louis extended his right hand and stroked Du Qingqing's hair. This time, Du Qingqing no longer dodged and only wolfed down the food on the plate. Seeing this scene of cold snow, I was really angry and sneered. I really didn't understand why I was doing it in the beginning. Now I don't even want to take a look anymore. I lowered my head and continued to eat the paste in my plate. Du Fang Yen was full of shame, but couldn't help but look at his sister's plate, swallowing saliva. After a moment. Du Qingqing, who had finished eating the food on the Lu Yi plate, followed him halfway through the tug and tug of Lu Yi. Until the two had already walked far away, Du Fang Yen looked at Han Xu Ezhi and asked, Why don't you speak for her? She's still so young. Disgusting. Han Xue seemed to feel that saying another word to him was a waste of words, so she stood up and left directly. Wait a moment, little sister. A person at the table next to him suddenly stopped Han Shui, as if he was quite interested in her. It has to be said that compared to Du Qingqing's youthfulness and immaturity, Han Shui's aloofness and arrogance are a different charm. It goes without saying that several people know what this guy wants to do. But different from Du Qingqing. The attitude of cold snow is significantly stronger and more deterrent. Even if her strength is not strong, no one will doubt her determination to resist, and this is also a necessary condition for the survival of natural disaster victims. Even if she dies, she will bite off a layer of your skin with ferocity. Do I know you? Cold Snow said coldly, get lost. This person, upon seeing this, was quite witty and did not trouble Han Shui again. In the classroom. Han Shui was still sulking about what had just happened looking as if it could explode at any moment. The three of them didn't dare to approach, but chose a corner to sit down. Chenimo and Charcoal had no expression on their faces, looking as if they knew nothing. Du Fangyan's face turned red, and his eyes were bloodshot. He kept looking outside the classroom, as if waiting for something. Class is almost over, except for Du Qingqing, Louis has not come either. Mentor Qinghong still arrived at the classroom on time, standing on the high platform and looking at everyone. Classmates, starting from today, I will teach 20 cultivation methods and application techniques for basic natural disaster skills. Each of you should focus on selecting one or two key training areas based on your own areas of expertise. As she spoke, she took out her notebook. Below, you will report one by one the basic skills that you want to focus on training. Gao Xu. The first person to get up is Gao Xu sitting at the front of the classroom. I want to focus on training basic assassination and basic body techniques. Before Qing Hong could respond, he took out a small bag of shiny stones from the storage space and respectfully handed them to Qing Hong. Such blatant bribery left even mentally prepared Chen Imo stunned. There are at least a dozen energy stones. Charcoal took a deep breath and murmured softly, looking very envious. After receiving the energy stone, Master Ching Hong naturally hmm and recorded it in his notebook. Next, several other adult starving ghosts also gave bribes one by one, which was so blatant and completely different from Chen Mo's educational philosophy, but in a disaster world, it was nothing but normal. Ching Hong mentor refused to accept anyone, or in other words, several people gave her a satisfactory amount in their hearts. Ghost Slaughter When Gitu arrived, he stood up and said, I want to focus on training basic chops and basic blocks. After looking up at him, the educated youth Red Mentor said calmly, Don't set your sights too high. 
with your qualifications, just learn a basic chopping skill, the next one is enough. Now everyone understands. If there is no bribery, then in terms of basic skills, one can only choose to focus on training. And the different consequences of this will result in a 7.0-level basic skill similar to an LV7, compared to the 6.0-level basic skills of 2LV6, in terms of passing the Hungry Death Ghost Trial task, the latter is naturally better. Although others are angry about this, they are also helpless. When it was Lei Wu's turn next, he only said lightly, basic elements. He didn't seem to have any intention of going forward to bribe, and he was extremely confident in himself. Qing Hong mentor didn't take it for granted and acted quite calmly. Soon it was Chen Mo's turn. He stood up and said, basic mental ability. After recording all the students in the class, teacher Qing Hong looked at his notebook and frowned, saying, we still need one more, where is Louis? Gao Xu stood up and went to the side of Master Qing Hong, whispering something while taking out a small bag. After taking the bag, Master Qing Hong opened it and glanced at it before throwing it back. Since he is sick, come see me again when he recovers. Upon seeing this scene, Chen Mo didn't have to think about it, but he knew that Master Qing Hong was not satisfied with the things in the bag, or rather with his behavior of daring to disrupt his classroom discipline. Immediately after, Teacher Qing Hong strode out of the classroom. When she returned, she held a huge wooden box in her arms, containing various types of equipment and props, and according to the records in her notebook, she handed out these equipment to everyone one by one. Chen Mo obtained a magical prop the size of a walnut, resembling a top. These are training props for hungry ghost students, which can help you better master basic skills and are also one of the welfare measures provided by the Great Sorrow River Disaster Academy. The crowd who received the training props from the trainees instinctively began to practice in the classroom. Chen Mo was surprised to find that it seemed easier to control this gyroscope with mental power than to control the key to the library. The gyroscope not only easily floated up, but also flew around him in a very stable arc. Through this gyroscope, he can feel his mental state more finely. Several people who noticed the situation on Chen Mo's side couldn't help but express surprise. Wow, when did you master your basic mental ability? Charcoal exclaimed in surprise, looking very envious. He chose to focus on training basic body techniques, but was given two weight-bearing sandbags by his mentor, which also have magical properties. It's just luck. Chen Mo's humility made Charcoal think he was hiding his mysteries. His legs bound with sandbags were clearly a bit disobedient, and his actions were quite awkward. There are a total of 12 students in the class, and mentor Qing Hong has started to guide them one by one. The time allocated to each person is quite limited. Everyone noticed that she spent significantly more time guiding the four adult starving ghosts, about three or four times as much as the others, and would personally demonstrate and explain, while treating the others hastily after a few sentences. This is clearly due to the previous bribery. Adult starving ghosts feel at ease about this and, intentionally or unintentionally, show a proud look in their eyes. Under the guidance of mentor Qing Hong, it was soon Chen Mo's turn. When did you master your basic mental ability? Yesterday. Not bad after a brief conversation, she praised Chen Mo and began to explain and guide. Many of the contents were practical knowledge that was not available in the books and materials, but unfortunately, she didn't have much time to guide Chen Mo's explanation, and soon it was the next student's turn. However, even so, Chen Mo still felt that after being guided and explained by mentor Qing Hong, many previously half-understood areas suddenly became clear and benefited greatly. Unfortunately, the mentor's presentation time was too short. Chen Mo looked at the few adult starving ghosts and felt a bit envious in his heart. Add one more sentence. After explaining around the class to the Qing Hong mentor, he seemed to have remembered something. After attracting everyone's attention, he loudly said, If you don't want to die in the hungry ghost trial, at least make sure your main basic skills are improved to LV5 or above. Of course, it would be even better if you can reach LV10. It was soon time for class to end. 
Under the command of mentor Ching Hong, everyone returned these training props one by one. After being confirmed by mentor Ching Hong one by one, the class was officially announced. End of this chapter. Chapter 10. Opening the Gap You are listening at NovelFull.audio. Chapter 10 Opening the Gap After Lunch. Chen Mo, who had completed a lap in the exercise area, arrived at the library at 2 p.m. and opened the door. The good news is that after these few days of exercise, he feels that his physical strength has significantly improved. At least after running a lap, he will no longer be as tired as before, unable to catch his breath. After tidying up another messy bookshelf today, he took out a book on basic mental knowledge. Following the brief explanation and guidance provided by mentor Ching Hong in class, he attempted to delve deeper into the mysteries behind the knowledge presented in the book. During this process, the library key became his training prop, and under his control of his mental power, he constantly made various movements around him. After long dot term exercise, he found that even this minimal use of mental power would constantly consume his energy. That's right, it consumes energy. And the attribute of physical strength is not displayed in the attribute panel, but is influenced by the basic strength value, which is endurance. After physical exertion, if one wants to recover, they will be affected by their basic physical condition, which can be called recovery power. Not just physical strength. After the energy consumption is completed, the recovery speed is also affected by the basic physical attributes. Fortunately, although Chen Mo's strength value is not high, his stamina value is 14 points, which means he has recovered his stamina quite well. It was soon 6 p.m., the closing time of the library. After Chen Mo finished organizing the borrowed books, he locked the library door and then arrived at Office 510. Reminder Lulan is adding one point of natural disaster contribution to you. May I ask if you, yes slash no, accept it? Yes. Chen Mo once again received one point of natural disaster contribution reward. Seeing the two natural disaster contributions in his optical brain chip, Chen Mo, who had been eating a life-sustaining meal for several days, instinctively wanted to reward himself. After all, the low-dot-grade food brought by Louis for breakfast not only made others drool, but also made Chen Mo envious for a long time. But after arriving at the cafeteria, he hesitated for a long time in the face of the one-dot-point natural disaster contribution consumption of low-dot-grade dishes, but ultimately chose to give up. Compared to the momentary desire in front of him, he must store some contribution points and plan for the future. If he can spend a hundred days of study rationally and accumulate 80 points of contribution points, it can be considered a considerable amount. At night, Chen Mo runs alone. One lap in the morning, one lap in the middle, and one lap in the evening, adding up to three laps, is already a high dot intensity exercise for Chen Mo. However, his diet is only a daily meal, completely unable to keep up with Chen Mo's physical exertion. In recent days, he has almost lost weight at a visible speed to the naked eye. Compared to physical fatigue, spiritual fulfillment and satisfaction make him even more satisfied, as if his whole body is endowed with positive energy support. Tip Your speed plus one. Chen Mo, gasping for breath, was momentarily stunned by the prompt. Just as he was pleasantly surprised and at a loss by the prompt, the chip unexpectedly sent another prompt. Tip. Your basic footwork level is plus one. Chen Mo looked at his attribute panel and indeed found the basic footwork LV1. Basic footwork represents the speed of movement. It seems that after Chen Mo's hard training in the past few days, preliminary results have been achieved. Not only has the speed of basic attributes been improved, but also the basic footwork has been developed from scratch, reaching LV1. As for the importance of basic steps, it goes without saying. If you can't beat it, run away. Compared to the evasion attribute of basic body movements during battles, basic step rules have the initiative to pursue or escape over long distances, which is undoubtedly quite important in Chen Mo's view. 
but this also reflects from another perspective how the stones in the past lacked exercise and were abandoned by their mother. After the unexpected surprise, Chen Emo gradually calmed down. Immediately, he continued to search for an uninhabited corner, using his mental power to drive the stones that could be seen everywhere to start training. Thanks to the guidance and explanation of the Qing Hong mentor in class, he suddenly became more focused in many areas of practice. Moreover, due to the murder incident here last night, Chen Emo was much more careful during his practice, being wary of anyone attacking him. Even if someone approached him slightly, he would show a cautious expression. It wasn't until late at night that Chen Mo returned to the dormitory. Hello. The low call of charcoal surprised Chen Mo, who was about to lie down. Still awake. The sky was completely dark, and the residual light from the street lamps outside shone into the dormitory. Chen Mo could vaguely see the movements of the charcoal. Charcoal didn't speak, but Chen Mo saw his suggestive movements and glanced in the direction he pointed to. He found that Du Qingqing was no longer in his original bed, but had moved to the side of Louis. Chen Emo nodded but remained silent. But he could feel that charcoal seemed to be mocking. This kind of thing is indeed quite impactful for Chen Emo, but he has now decided to adapt to the survival rules of this world. In a disaster world, the weak really don't have much choice, especially those who have neither potential nor resistance spirit. This cruel world will ravage them to the point where there is no residue left. Chen Emo was lying in bed about to sleep when the charcoal beside him sighed again. What's going on? The charcoal flipped over. In the afternoon, I saw them arriving at Professor Ching Hong's office, probably to receive additional guidance. It is not difficult to discern his anger from his words. When they were in class, they received more education than us, and now they are receiving additional education. If this continues, we won't be able to catch up with them at all. This is too unfair, said Charcoal Additional Guidance. Upon hearing these words, Chen Emo couldn't help but feel a chill in his heart. Of course, he knew what it meant. But he has no choice. After all, he couldn't bribe his mentor like these adult starving ghosts. In a world of disaster, this is a rather ordinary thing and not worth a big fuss about. Hey, what can we do then? Chen Emo rolled over and fell asleep. He was too tired. That's it. A month has passed. The natural disasters and starving ghosts in the college keep leaving the college to start trials, and people outside are constantly replenishing themselves. Unconsciously, Chen Emo has fully adapted to the college life in this world, eating the simplest food and undergoing the toughest training. During this month, through continuous training, he also made considerable progress. Not only in terms of basic attributes, strength plus one has reached nine points, speed plus one has reached eight points, but also in terms of basic skills, basic boxing plus one, basic footwork plus one, basic blocking plus one, and basic chanting plus two have been greatly improved. Two laps of long dot distance running, the morning exercise ends. Chen Emo adjusted his breathing and walked towards the cafeteria, then opened his data panel again. Name. Traveler. Level. Hungry ghost. Talent. Stone skin. Qi and blood. 140, defense. 7. Speed. 8. Power. 9. Physical fitness. 14. Spirit. 23. Energy. 10. Basic fist technique. LV2. Basic chopping. LV1. Basic footwork. LV2. Basic block. LV3. Basic memory. LV3. Equipment. None. Skill. None. Over the past month, Chen Emo has made significant progress and has not wasted his hard training. At least he has initially distanced himself from Du Fang Yen and Charcoal, approaching the strength of the three abyss hungry ghosts. With his high dot intensity mental power and basic mental power LV3 level, 
he has initially developed a certain combat ability, and his 14-point physique and stone skin talent have also given him more possibilities. After breakfast, Chen Emo came to the classroom and naturally sat in his old seat. Just now, the basic assassination level in Louis has reached LV7. The words of charcoal made it difficult for Chen Emo to set up a channel. How could it be so fast? You should know that a month ago, the basic assassination in Louis was only LV5, and surprisingly, it arrived at LV7 so quickly. Although it was also a level 2 increase, the difficulty level from LV5 to LV7 was clearly not the same as the difficulty level from LV1 to LV3. This made Chen Mo's satisfaction, which had just risen, immediately pour a bucket of cold water on him, making him calm down. It's not just about basic assassination, it's said that his basic body method has also been upgraded from LV2 to LV4, so there's no need to be unlucky now. Charcoal is somewhat gloating, completely devoid of the sadness it had a month ago when it sighed unfairly, as if it has accepted its fate. Chen Mo's face became even more ugly. Chasing someone who is already better than you but works as hard as you is truly a form of despair. He has made great progress in the past month. According to his estimation, even Cold Snow may not have made as much progress as himself, but compared to these adult starving ghosts who received additional guidance from their mentors, the gap seems even greater. We must find a way. Chen Emo made up his mind to find a way to bridge the gap and never let it continue. Spending the morning feeling suppressed in Chen Maoyu. Two o'clock in the afternoon. Chen Emo opened the library gate on time. After a month of careful sorting by him, the library has now become quite tidy, with tens of thousands of books sorted and placed in corresponding positions. The library looks neat and pleasing to the eye. Not only that. The once damaged temporary reading tables and chairs have also been repaired by Chen Emo. The previously dimly lit room became even more spacious and bright due to his adjustment of the bookshelf position, and even thoughtfully added a drinking area and skeletal decorations in the corners of the house. The library has completely entered the right track, and many people even start chatting with him. Hello, where is the formula for calculating equipment quality? Chen Mo, who was reading with his head down, grabbed the key controlled by his nearby memory. The person asking was a girl with fiery red wavy long hair, very tall and slender. Her slender legs were set off by black stockings and high heels, making her blood boil and full of temptation. Due to the fact that the disaster world has come into contact with many other civilizations, any attire is not surprising. The second layer of the third row bookshelf. After Chen Emo informed her location, the girl turned around and left. At the age when his blood was full, Chen Emo couldn't help but glance at the girl again. Instinctively, he swallowed his saliva, suppressed his restlessness, and continued to look at the book in his hand. This book is titled Application Techniques for E.Level Skills, The Disaster World, due to the relationship between optical data chips, can almost be said to be a world full of data and grade classification. Therefore, many books will provide in-depth introductions and analyses of various situations in the form of data. And Chen Mo's mathematical foundation is quite good, and the so-dot called data in this world is not very advanced, so he is quite adept at studying it. According to this book, the biggest advantage of E.Level skills is their extremely short cooldown time and various negative states. The optimal way to apply E.Level skills is not to directly release them in the ordinary sense, but to intersperse between two ordinary attacks, using energy consumption to intersperse between physical consumption attacks, and dealing three damage in a short period of time is the optimal release method. Compared to regular attacks, the damage of E.Level skills is not outstanding. But it often comes with constantly accumulating negative states, and through continuous accumulation, the destructive power of these negative states will become increasingly significant, until they become the last straw to overwhelm the enemy. The more Chen Emo read this book, the more he felt enlightened. The battle of the natural disaster victims is not just as simple as I remember. End of this chapter